Albert Lee is suing pilot instructor Ed Meyer for damage resulting from Ed moving his plane. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2145, Lee versus Meyer. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Lee, you are an amateur pilot? Yes, I was a... Yes. And you owned your own plane? I bought it to train in, yes. When did you purchase the plane? In, uh, I believe, April of uh, 2021. Did you buy it new or used? I bought it used. What kind of plane is it? It's a Cirrus SR-22, 2010 type Golf. What did you pay for it? I paid 420000 for it, I believe. Is there a mortgage on the... Yes, there is. How much? It's uh, 2204 per month. You paid $425,000 for the plane? Yeah, I put a down payment on it. The outstanding balance is 347000 The payment per month is 2000 okay. I, I don't need the payment per month. I just wanted to know what you okay. paid for it and how much you put into the plane. Yes. The defendant is a pilot, licensed pilot, and he was giving you some training on the plane. Certified flight instructor, yes. It is your claim that at some point, you'll tell me when, that the defendant was operating the plane by himself. You weren't there. And he was moving it from one part of the FBO to another part, and he hit a cone and caused substantial damage to the propeller and the engine. And while you had... Your insurance did cover some of it. According to you, it did not cover all of the expenses, and you want Mr. Meyer to be responsible for that. So it's a simple question. Mr. Meyer, do you remember the date that you were operating the plane when Mr. Lee was not there? Yes. What date? It was in, in April sometime. April of 2022? Correct. Do you remember the date, Mr. Lee? Yes. What date? It's uh, April 22nd. Did that sound right? Yes. Okay. And from what I read in the papers, Mr. Meyer had, in fact, taken you out, but then the weather got bad. You decided that you would make your way home and that he would get the plane home when the weather was better. Correct. And that was on or about April 22nd. I flew home on a commercial flight the day before on April 21st. And you stayed with the plane? Yes. Now, would you agree, Mr. Meyer, that if, in fact, you hit an object with the plane, it would be your responsibility? Yes. Because it would mean that there was some sort of negligence involved. Right. And then that would be the issue of damages. Mr. Lee, you were not present when this incident happened. I was not... Not present. I was not present. Uh, I was able... No, you were not present. I was not present. That's the answer. Was this witness present? He was not present but he was the one responsible for procuring the evidence on what happened and how the propeller was damaged. Who does he work for? He has his uh, own flight school, and he also manages my airplane in terms of the maintenance and the upkeep. Okay. Could you step up, please? Tell me your last name. Last name is uh, Williams. Mr. Williams, were you charged with gathering the evidence to determine what happened to the plane on the 22nd of April? Yes, I was. And you're paid a monthly fee by the plaintiff to that's, manage his plane. That's correct. Did you retain the defendant as an instructor or did Mr. Lee? That was uh, both uh, decided by Mr. Lee and Mr. Myers to fly for him. But you he, he's did an not... He's an independent contractor. At that. You did not have anything to do with... As the manager of the plane, you didn't have anything to do with selecting Mr. Meyer. I, I, I did select Mr. Meyer to fly with, with Albert. You did? Yes. Okay. Because were you the one who introduced him That's to Mr. Correct. Meyer? That's correct. When, Mr. Lee, did you start to work with Mr. Meyer? It was probably a prior flight where we flew to San Francisco for a business meeting I had. After that, I believe it was... In the, what month? Roughly about the same month. In, in April? Yeah, in so April. So you didn't April. know him for a long time? No, not very long. I'm going to get back to you in a minute, Mr. Williams. Prior to the defendant... Had anybody else been an instructor for you? Yes. Uh, Clinton was my primary instructor, but I flew with uh, some other instructors as well. But it wasn't until the month that this incident occurred that you had been connected with the defendant? Correct. Okay. Now, sir, how were you advised that the plane that you managed was in an accident? Uh, I was. I received a phone call from Ed saying that there you, was a problem. From whom? From Mr. Myers that there was a problem with the aircraft after he taxied and did the run-up and returned the aircraft 
back to Signature in Las Vegas. We notified and contacted a... Did you ask, what you would usually ask is what happened? Yeah, what happened? Just he, a second, and what did he say to you? He said that there were, he was having instrument problems with the aircraft and he wasn't able to take off, so he returned the aircraft. At that point in time, I contacted the Sierra Service Center, had two technicians go out and look at the aircraft, see what was wrong. At the time, the technicians found that they... Don't tell me what they found. Okay. You can't tell me what they found. It's hearsay. They send me pictures of the damage of the propeller. May I see the photographs? Okay, so that's a fresh damage. Correct. Can I scroll this? Yes, you may. Or it's just one. Okay, so you have a picture of that. You have a picture of the cone that has a slice in it. Correct. That's the object he hit. We also have a video showing the plane taxi and hitting the, the cone at the I'd like there. to see that as well. Okay. Okay. Let's see what we got. As you can see where the... Just one second. Mr. Meyer, is that a fair and accurate representation of where the plane was before you moved it? It should be on the, the last, on the far left side of that layer jet. Okay. Oh. Mr. Meyer, do you see that you went over a cone? It's interesting. I didn't even notice there was a cone. You may not notice it, but you see it now. Yes. Okay. Your hitting of the cone caused damage to that plane. I mean, you're not talking about flying a 747. You're talking about a little single prop plane? Yeah, me, they like those planes you put together, we used to put together with rubber bands. I wouldn't put my behind in one of those planes for all the money in the world. Albert Lee claims pilot instructor Ed Meyer is responsible for damage after Ed moved Albert's plane. Okay. In all of my years of, of flying, which is pretty significant, I was an airline pilot too, I've never, ever experienced that in my life. Okay, but you see it now. Yes. It's not an on purpose. It's, you no, know, that's why they call them accidents. We don't mean for them to happen. Right. We don't mean for them to happen, but you do see that the plane did hit a cone. Right. Okay. And I have photographs of the cone that has a slice in it, and the same kind of slice from one of the propellers. Now, so that's conceded that Mr. Meyer did, in fact, hit the cone, which, in all probability, caused damage to the plane, caused damage to the propeller. Now, tell me about your insurance. The insurance covered the propeller. They covered the uh, teardown of the engine. When uh, something strikes the propeller, they have to tear apart the engine, make sure the components... Do you have those... I that do. That paperwork for me? I'd like to see it. Okay, so here is the insurance covered portion, and here is my covered portion that I had to come out of pocket to pick up the plane. Okay. And I can explain both invoices. And if you flip to the last page, that'll have the total. Insurance covered about uh, 60 something thousand for the propeller and the engine teardown. Okay, so the damaged propeller, Mr. Williams, causes you to have to take apart the engine, fix the engine, if there was damage to the engine. Am I correct? That's correct. The FAA requires, anytime you strike an object with a propeller, the engine has to be inspected in the component parts. So the well, Component parts of, of uh, the in, engine? In, yeah, of the damage, potential damage of the engine. Internal damage that could be caused by striking an object. Okay. The insurance covered how much, sir? Mr. It, Lee? It's, uh, sorry, it's on the, uh, in 60, I think it was 63,000, 64,000. It's on the last page. The last page shows... Shows a deposit $63, of $63,000. Yes, that's it. The deposit was 40, balance due was 23. Did the insurance company pay the entire... They 63, this entire $63,000. $63, this is what was submitted to them? Yes. Okay, now I'd like you to take a look at this, Mr. Meyer. No, I'm going to actually ask Mr. Williams to take a look at this document. These are the items, Mr. Williams, that Mr. Lee says were uncovered. I would like you to go through all those items and tell me 
Which of those items relate to the engine and which do not? Okay, is this the total? Carefully, because I'm going to potentially ask you about each individual thing, because there looks to me like some things that bear no relation to an engine. Okay, so most of the items that you see that are airworthiness on the airframe are the items that need to be inspected and or replaced from the teardown. So your item one, item two, three, five, uh, four, item five, six, seven, eight. These are all items that the repair shop goes through the engine and assesses whether it needs... Well, tell me how the brakes would be impacted. I don't think the... impacted br by hitting the... Which one would And I this? don't know. But how brakes would be impacted by hitting a the nose cone. Brake lining, I don't know what that means. Okay. Yeah, some of these items, uh, Your Honor, such as one of these items, the brake lines, as you pointed out, is probably not part of the... Well, that's brake. what I want you to go through, sir. Okay. Do you understand? I want you to take a marker, a pen, <sighs> and circle, because... I don't know a whole lot about okay. airplanes, but I know a little bit about airplanes. I know what's routine maintenance and what has to be taken care of because a plane either falls on its nose or falls on its tail, both of which I've experienced. Well, this is a small invoice. This is not your... This is a 12, Mr. Williams, 12. don't ask him. I didn't ask you to have a conference with him. Okay. I asked no, you I... to look at that. You're the management company. I want you to strike those items that are not related to this accident and go through them very carefully because... Can I make a no. comment? No. Okay. Nope. To you directly. Nope. Okay. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you something? Can you ask me something? Yeah. Well, they should tell you those cones are made of plastic. I don't care. They're heavy cones. You hit the cone. And the plane flew perfectly fine before you hit the cone. It didn't run after you hit the cone. You don't have to be a genius to figure out the cone cause, your hitting of the cone caused damage to that plane. I mean, you're not talking about flying a 747. You're talking about a little single, pro there's a single prop plane. Right. Yeah. Me, they like those planes you put together, we used to put together with rubber bands. I wouldn't put my behind in one of those planes for all the money in the world. The only items I can see, Your Honor, are two items that may not be related to the accident, items seven and eight. Okay, may I have that back, please, sure. sir? And you are familiar with planes, sir, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So what you're saying is item... The circled item. Seven and eight. Correct. So we have... There's a, a couple of... Invoices. We have right and left main gear, but it was, it was 143 plus two... What about item nine? Pitch, trim, jab, nut, loose. What is that? Probably what they do during the inspection and the teardown, they go through the, the aircraft itself, make sure it's airworthy. So they probably caught another item or two. You can probably put that on an uh, item that mm -hmm. wasn't part of the accident. The big ticket items are adding up all of these items, Mr. M Meyer, that probably have no relation to the accident which you caused. Correct. Still bring the total amount to more than this court's jurisdictional limit. Can you tell me, sir, why your insurance... Mr. Williams, let's go back to you. You manage okay. this plane. Can you tell me why Mr. Lee's insurance didn't cover all the damage to the plane? A lot of the prospective renters or, or instructors that everybody uses or we used in this case have their own... carry their own insurance for this type of incident. Their insurance covers basically downtime loss of operation, or in this case... Uh, you mean Mr. Meyer? Yes. Would have his own... Do you have your own insurance? No. No. Don't you do a check to find out if they have their own insurance before you recommend uh, someone? He, he had insurance, but it was lapsed. If you have insurance that's lapsed, then you have no insurance. Yeah, that's correct. So you're lucky that he's not suing you. Albert Lee is accusing pilot instructor Ed Meyer of hitting a cone and damaging his plane. Ed says Albert was already paid by his insurance company. Okay, Mr. Williams, you were the one who recommended 
That's Mr. correct, Meyer, we did. Don't you do a check to find out if they have their own insurance before you recommend um, someone? He, he had insurance, but it was lapsed. It well, lapsed. That, he didn't have insurance. I get that all the time. If you have insurance that's lapsed, then you have no insurance. Yeah. Uh, as a flight school, we, uh, our instructors are required to carry the insurance. Okay, but that didn't we, happen here. That's correct. So you're lucky that he's not suing you because you managed the plane for him. And you, you recommended him, Mr. Williams, you know. It's, but it's, you have a management company that manages your plane. They're supposed to make certain that if you have a certain kind of plane, that you have pilots certified to fly those kinds of planes. And if they give me a list of pilots and those pilots aren't certified to fly the kind of plane that I might have, then yeah. it's the fault of the management company. In this case here, the... Uh... The plaintiff and the defendant were working together as far as their payment and their fees well, they were going to okay. charge. Well, that's okay. That's okay. They may have been working head to head. I mean, it was, it was Mr. Meyer's fault, but I'm just telling you that Mr. Lee relies on your advice. What business are you in, Mr. Lee? Uh, I do commercial real estate. I sell shopping centers and office buildings. Okay. That's not his business. That's why he hires you. And if he hires you... He asks you for recommendations as to where to get the plane repaired for an instructor. Now, the fact that he may pay him independently, he's relied on you for information, so I suggest, Mr. Williams, that you tighten up your ship a little bit. Mr. Meyer, you're responsible to the plaintiff for the damage that you caused his plane. Why did you let your insurance lapse? It had lapsed. I just didn't even realize the fact that it had lapsed. I just realized the fact that when this came about, that's what happened. Well, when was the last time you paid premiums? Probably a year before that. Anything else you want to tell me, Mr. Meyer? Uh, you owe him $10,000. You caused the damage. You have to fix it. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're finished. Thank you. This court is adjourned. I understand her point, the fact that she, what she saw. I thought she's very fair. These cones are made out of plastic. It's hard to believe. I, it sounds like a gunshot when you hit the cone and uh, triggered several warnings. And for him to say he had no idea, it's, it's uh, a little bit hard to believe. They don't have much weight to them. With the loud bang after you hit it, uh, it's quite obvious that you should have stopped and <laughs> shut down and, and inspect the damage. There normally is never a cone at the 12 o'clock position. They're at, the, they're at the left side and the right side. They place cones all the way around the aircraft. And it's part of your responsibility as a pilot in command to ins do a walk around pre-flight Make sure there's no object in front of your aircraft. When I taxied out halfway down, that's when I recognized there was an ICAST message that came on. I finally got it back, and uh, no more student pilots uh, won't uh, let any CFIs fly for a while. You know what I thought about in this case, Sarah? That lay people have to look at something, lay people. And while I'm a judge and have certain expertise, I have no expertise <laughs> in reading slips that show what's been done on a car or, or an airplane or a train or a boat. But, but we have common sense. But we have <laughs> common sense. And your brakes are not part of an engine. Mm -hmm. You know, you have an engine job, and then you have a brake job, and you have a... I saw where you were going. <laughs> different kind. Of, and, you know, if you have an accident that impacts on the right driver's door, if you put in a new wheel casing in the left rear door, well, that has nothing to do with an accident. Probably just an oversight. He did state that those two items were not part of, you know. He did. He did at the end. But he did. But it just feels a little uneasy when they try and slip those things in there that just common sense doesn't ring mm -hmm. true that it comes from the same. Yeah, standpoint. you know, front, back, you know, yeah. the head of a horse, the tail <laughs> of a horse, but doesn't fit in. And there's really no difference between not having insurance when you're driving a car and not having insurance as a flight instructor. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty serious. That's... I would think there would be a more rigorous check on that before you get behind an aircraft, the well, wheel of an aircraft. <laughs> absolutely. You would think that there would be. Yeah. As Florence is suing her nephew, Noah T. Arena, for the cost of a Toyota 4Runner. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Thank you. Case 2160, Canellas versus Terrarina. Thank you. Ms. Canellas, is this your son? Yes, ma'am. And his name is Chris? Yes. Okay. This case is about a truck. Toyota 4Runner, yes, ma'am. That was titled in your name about 21, 22 years old. 
but was in the possession of your son, Chris. Yes, ma'am. And then Chris went to jail. Yes. And your great nephew moved into that house. Yes, ma'am, correct. And you moved into that house with your wife, girlfriend? Fiance. Fiance. Yes, when are you getting married? So we're, we're waiting on our second daughter in February, so after February. Okay, well, that's not the way we usually did it 100 years ago in the Stone Age, but <laughs> I understand that that's the way a lot of people do it these days. Anyway, you moved on to the property. When you moved on to the property, in addition to some other things, there was this truck. When did you give your son the truck? In what year? It's always been his truck, but I titled it over to him in 2021. Okay, so you signed over a title to him. Yes, ma'am. So it's not your truck anymore. So what are you doing here, suing for it? He was never able to go and t transfer the title or go and register it, so... Um, because there was not one. Shh, shh, I... Shh. If you say that again, it won't be good for you. We don't shout out here. I run a very organized shop. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Great. Okay, so you acknowledge that it's always been his truck. Did you buy it new? I bought it used for when? graduation in 2005. What's the value of it? Just between three to 5,000, but that's based on 100,000 miles and good condition, so. Okay. Chris, stand up, please. On what date did you go to jail? Uh, April 20th, 2022. How long were you there? Till July 11th. What were you there for? A uh, drug charge. Is that still pending? No, ma'am. When you were arrested or when you were incarcerated, was there an engine in this truck? Be very careful in your answer. Was the truck running? Yes, ma'am. How many miles did the truck have on it? Roughly 220,000. And you were in the house and you disposed of the truck? Amongst other things, yes, ma'am. All we're talking about here is the truck. Okay. On what date did you dispose of the truck? In August, whenever me and Susie made a verbal agreement for me to have ownership of the truck because it was no longer running. How did you dispose of it? It was towed away to a junk shop and used for parts. you have any paperwork? I have paperwork for the towing. Great. I'll see the picture and I'll see the towing receipt. That tells you that it wasn't working. With the new mileage, about 1900 to 4000 would be the okay. range. Again, for good condition. Okay, and this is an invoice for $75, junk vehicle towed, no keys, no title, doesn't run, wrecked. Kevin, yes. show this to Chris. So that's what you're suing for. You're suing for the value of the truck because it's been junked, so you want $5,000. The truck, at best, if it were running, would be $1,900. According to this, it wasn't running. Now, is to Tarina? Yes, ma'am. I want you to tell me the conversation you had with your aunt. Her son was now out of jail, because if this happened in August, you got out of jail on July 11th. Yes, ma'am. Where did you go? I went to my mother's house. And that was before the truck was towed? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Chris, did your cousin tell you that the truck wasn't running? Uh, no, no, ma'am. When did you find out that the truck wasn't running? I was always assuming that it was running. Uh, I did attempt to contact him, and uh, he told me to come pick up the truck, and I told him I was on my way. I believe it was on the uh, July 15th. We have uh, the text messages here. I'd like to see them. Okay, so this all sounds very civilized. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Chris, when did it become uncivilized? It really never became uncivilized. We just, um, uh, whenever I went to go get it that day, I, I think something happened and... Yeah. I'm not following you. Okay. We were all over the place. This all sounds very civilized. He's living in the house now. You were not. Right. Some of your stuff was still there. Correct. You know each other a long time. Mm -hmm. He said, some stuff I'll throw away. You said, okay, but the other stuff I've got in the house, come by and pick it up. Okay. Yes. At that time, he had to have told you that the truck was not running because he said the truck is at the exact same spot where you parked it. Right. Well, I just assumed they didn't have the key because a lot of my belongings got thrown away. Well, they didn't have the key because the tow people said that there was no key. Right. That's just why I, I assumed the truck was still in the same okay. spot. Okay. Now you find out that the truck is not running, right? Because you went there to pick up some of your stuff. 
Come on. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and that was in July, because you said you were coming over July 15th. Yes, ma'am. So you came to his house where your truck was sitting. Yes, ma'am. What did you find out about the truck? The truck was still in the same spot and it wasn't running. Same spot? Same spot. Did anybody prevent you from taking the truck when you came? No, ma'am. Then why didn't you take it? Just simply for the key. I didn't have the key to turn it on. Just a second. April, May, June, and July. So the car had not been touched in four months. That's what you're telling me. While you were incarcerated, and if you just said to me the car was in the same spot from the time you left now, and there was no key, so you had no idea whether the truck was running or not, right? Well, I just assumed that it wasn't running because of the key, the, well, the no key. if you were that interested, you would have found out. You would have called a mechanic, they would have come, they would have jump-started the truck, and somebody would have made you a new key. Then you could have taken the truck. He doesn't have to keep your truck on his property. Uh, well, first of all, my family member said that the, they were evicted. They had not been evicted. What evicted? What does that have to do with the truck? At the time, Your Honor, he, of course, was incarcerated. No, he wasn't he incarcerated. When, he wasn't when, incarcerated when you gave him the truck. No, he was not. No, I see. I have the dates here that you told me. Of he course. wasn't incarcerated. He wasn't incarcerated for a year, and he didn't transfer the title. I asked my family member if I was able to go into the house and remove all his items and look for the key and the title so I can have the vehicle removed, and everything was thrown out of the house. So when he came to pick it up, it was gone the next day. I have text messages right here saying that she doesn't like being lied to and she's gonna go the court route. I had an officer knock on my door at eight o'clock in the morning and serve me papers, try okay, to give me a grand theft auto charge and have a felony on my name. Can I see the text message that she sent to you afterwards? Later. He says you didn't make any payments. I never said I was gonna pay him that back. Well, you told me that you asked him if you could borrow some money. That's a what you said. A couple times I asked to borrow money, but the entirety of that, all that, like I didn't say I was gonna pay that back. He should know I was, he was just being nice. Susie Canales claims her nephew, Noah Tiarina, owes for the cost of a Toyota 4Runner. What I'm telling you is he was not prevented from taking the truck the day that he came, which was mid-July. He didn't dispose of the truck until August. That's what this receipt says, I think. Now, this invoice was prepared two days ago. Yes, ma'am. Well, this doesn't say when they took the truck. How did you get this invoice two days I, ago? It was from August. I got the, the invoice because I needed it for evidence, and the, the towing company that sent me that invoice gave me the incorrect day because they sent it to me on the day that they sent me the receipt. doesn't say the date it was towed. Junk vehicle towed. You have any email communication or text communication immediately after the vehicle was towed or before? With her? Yes. I called her the day that it was towed because I have respect for my family member. And I said, I'm towing the truck. It needs to get off of my property today. And she said, mijo, I feel like I should be compensated for the truck. How much do you want for the truck? She said she wanted $500. I told her that I could pay it in <laughs> monthly increments. Why would you want to buy a truck that was worthless? Because I have respect for my family and I hold family very close to me. And if she says that something's not right, I'm going to make it right. And that's what I tried to do. I failed on that first month of I was supposed to give her $100. I did not pay the first $100. I have text messages right here saying that she doesn't like being lied to and she's going to go the court route. I had an officer knock on my door at 8 o'clock in the morning and serve me papers, try okay, to give me a grand theft auto charge and have a felony on my name. Okay. Can I see the text message that she sent to you afterwards? Did you recall, Ms. Canales, having a conversation with your nephew about $500 for the truck? No, ma'am, I do not. My witness does. Shh. How was he supposed to pick up the truck when he just got out of jail the day before you had it towed? And I asked for permission to look for the keys and title, but everything was moved out of the garage. At that time, I was taking my mother to the hospital. But it's okay. I just got to go through the court process. Regardless, you're going to get your money, Aunt Susie. So 
there's clear that you had a discussion with him about money because he says to you in response to his statement, so I don't see anything here about $500, but he says, I'm going to get you your money. Mm -hmm. Well, you didn't say to him, what money are you talking about? I just told him I was done. I, no, I, I, no, I you said, I'm tired of the back and forth, which leads me to believe that that's exactly what happened. Do you have any other documentation of this communication that you had with her? I mean, it's a useless piece of junk of a car anyway. The only thing I have is a letter of me mailing her the money order. That letter that I mailed her, I have no idea w w where it is. I asked... Well, I don't know where it is either, but that's a self-serving document. I don't care. But you acknowledge that you told her that you would pay her $500 for the car. She's the registered owner. Is that correct? Correct. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $500. I believe you. Your Honor. This court is adjourned. He knows he did us wrong, and uh, he knows he's lying right now. This is the only reason why he's acting like that, and that's why the reason my mom is so upset. It's sad that it had to end that way for a family member because family is something that I hold very close to my heart, um, and I don't like to see it in that way. He had free run of all of my belongings, and uh, he ended up selling it. But at the end of the day, it's my livelihood and my fiance's little livelihood that that state. He knows what he did. I did not take advantage of my own family, never. Yeah, it's tore us up a little bit. It can't be put back together. Troublesome. I'll tell you some of the troublesome things that I didn't even want to go into with them. He went to jail in April. Mm -hmm. His mother knew where the car was. She could have gone to get the car. She had four months. Yeah. Her son went to the house when he got out of jail in July. And all he had to do was do the same thing the defendant had to do. But call a tow truck, truck and have it towed to your house. Right. Get an extra key made. Right. And I thought that he was actually a pretty good nephew. Yeah, I did too. He didn't have to pay for the car, but he felt for his aunt and the situation that she was in. And well, he was just trying to be respectful and yes. probably keep the peace. Exactly. Between everybody. Well, again, no good deed goes unpunished. I was just about to say that. Case 21-23, Valenzuela versus Jenkins. All parties, please step forward. Javon Valenzuela claims his former friend, Darian Jenkins, owes for unpaid loans and bail money from a false arrest. Mr. Valenzuela, it is your claim that the defendant, who is a friend of yours, owes you for some small loans that you made to him? Yes. And then it is your claim that he had you falsely arrested? Yes. And you want damages for that? You've known him for a while, according to your complaint. You knew him, you were friendly with him, and then he moved out of state and then moved back. Where did you move to, sir? To Colorado. And you moved to Colorado from where? From Texas. And in Texas is where you knew the plaintiff. Yes. In what year did you move to Colorado? 2019. And in what year did you move back to Texas? This year, 2022. Okay. And why did you move back? Why did I move back? You moved to Colorado for what? My family was up there, yeah. And then my family went back to Texas. Oh, so you moved with your family? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 29. Did you live with your family in Colorado? No, we didn't all live together, no. The reason you say you came back to Texas was because your family came back? Yeah. Did you have a job? Uh, yes, I did. Where? I worked from home. What kind of work? For a newspaper. In Colorado? Yes. What did you do in Texas? Uh, whenever I moved back, I was still working from home, but um, they let me go. It was, I got laid off. When did you get laid off? Uh, I would say June. June of this year? Yes, ma'am. And what month did you move back to Texas? Oh, I had already moved back in May. When you moved back in May, where did you go to live? I was living in hotels. But there came a point when you had no money. It got to a point. When did it get to a point when you had no money? Maybe July. And when did you contact Mr. Valenzuela? I'd say July. You didn't yeah. contact him in May before, when you came back? I just uh, want to say that's a lie. When did just, you contact him? I mean, we talked while I lived in Colorado. You know, we always text each other, so... Well, when you contacted Sorry. him in July, what did you say to him? I couldn't say exactly what I said, but... The, give me the gist of it. Let me borrow some money, I guess. Okay. I guess, um... And you needed it for living. Right. And what did he say to you? Um, he did, sometimes, if I asked him. Okay. And how much did he give you? Uh, here and there, maybe 100, maybe two. Every... No, all together. All together? Oh, I couldn't say how much all together. You maybe... couldn't say? I couldn't say, maybe a few hundred. Did he give you money for housing? Uh, a couple of times he did. How much? A hundred here, a hundred Do you have there. a record of how much you gave him, sir? I do. Okay, because he's already said, and would you read that back to me, Whitney, please, about borrowing? He said, let me borrow some money. Right, okay, let me borrow some money. So tell me how much money 
You let him borrow. 1,200. Show me. Okay, now tell me what that is that you're giving him, all those papers that you expect me to read. These are screenshots of every time I sent him money. Oh, can I see it, please? Okay, get ready, Sarah Rose. Anybody who came could see that your lip was bloody. You say he fell, must have fallen outside. You don't know how that happened. But if you both are alleging that there was a fight, police would look at you and say, well, he's injured. They wouldn't have arrested you unless you had a warrant, right? Javon Valenzuela is suing his former friend, Darian Jenkins, for unpaid loans and damages from an assault. So every time you gave him money... He agreed to pay me back. No. no, he's already told me that he called you and asked if he could borrow some money, and you said yes, and he said, I don't know how much it was. So if he doesn't know how much it was, you have screenshots of it, and Sarah is going to add them all up. Okay. Of all the money that you said that you borrowed from him, how much did you pay back? Uh, one... One fifty, one twenty. Good guess. Did he give you back one hundred and twenty dollars? No. Did he give you back anything? No. Nothing ever. No. Okay. So while Sarah is adding that up, there came a point when you left the hotel. Is that right? Yes. And Mr. Valenzuela probably got tired of giving you money and said that you could stay in a spare room in his house. For the most part, yes. And you moved in in August of 2022, the end of August. Yes. And then in September, you had an, a fight. I don't care what the fight was about. It became physical? Uh, he was physical, yes. No, no, I wasn't, Your Honor. No, okay. I wasn't. Let's say you had an argument that spilled out into the street because this becomes very important because there's the other charge is false arrest. And it was a false arrest, you claim, based on his statement to the police that you assaulted him. Right. Right. He says, yes, you had an argument, but you weren't arrested on his allegation that you assaulted him, but you were arrested and held on an outstanding warrant. When the police responded, they found that there was an outstanding warrant. So now I want you to tell me, in September of 2022, did you have an outstanding warrant? That's either a yes or a no. Well, it was on a payment plan. I don't care what it was. Did you have an outstanding warrant? Yes. And the outstanding warrant was for a what? Traffic tickets. What kind of traffic ticket? I think I was speeding, and I didn't have my license either. So speeding, driving without a license. What else? You have insurance? I think it was they, insurance. Not think, and not think. Speeding, driving without a license, and no insurance. And no tags. And no tags. And for that, you got fined. Yes. And you didn't pay the fine. I was paying it. Well, there wasn't a warrant outstanding because you were cooperating and paying the fines. The county that I'm in, they said, the police officer said, it doesn't matter if you're on a payment plan, they'll arrest you if they want to. Mr. Valenzuela, did you miss payments on your fine? Yes. Perfect. And so when the police responded to this kerfuffle that was out in the street, when they ran both your names, your name came up with an active warrant. Yes. Well, that's easy. So that you were arrested on the outstanding warrant. I would have never been arrested, though, if he wouldn't have acted. If he like didn't he did. call the police. No, he didn't call the police. Who did? My neighbor did, because the way he was acting. So your neighbor called the police, but for the outstanding warrant, I don't know whether the police would have taken you into custody. You had an injured lip. They could see that your lip was bloody. You say he fell, must have fallen outside. You don't know how that happened. It's really not relevant to this case. But if I were the police and I showed up, you didn't have any visible injuries, right? No. You had a busted lip. If you both are alleging that there was a fight, police would look at you and say, well, he's injured. He's got a busted lip, got to sew it up. They wouldn't have arrested you unless you had a warrant, right? Right. Good. So that's not his fault that you had a warrant. It's not his fault. Have that total. It's two thousand seven hundred and twenty-seven dollars. 
and 56 cents, and that's including some direct payments to Motel 6s and other housing accommodations. Includes that? Yes, in addition to direct payments to the defense. Great. He says you didn't make any payments. 2727. I mean, there's no way he expected me to pay. Uh, I never said I was going to pay him that back. Well, you told me that you asked him if you could borrow some money. That's a what you said. A couple times I asked to borrow money, but the entirety of that, all that, like, I didn't say I was going to pay that back. And he should know. I, he, was, he was just being nice. He was being and nice. Sometimes he offered Not that. anymore. Yeah, not anymore. You have a job now? Yes. Okay, great. 2727, judgment for the plaintiff. We're finished. Thank you. This court is adjourned. I think he was just mad overall, so he just picked something to to get me back with. Just like he said, he thought I was being nice. Why would you say you're gonna pay me back, but then not pay me back? He was screaming, yeah, he was screaming, um, yeah, just screaming, cussing, like, embarrassing. He was acting crazy, and because he was acting crazy, he woke up the whole neighborhood? Well, he was drunk going crazy outside, running around the, the apartment complex, so she called the cops on him. That's what made my neighbor call the cops, and that's why they came. Oh, no, there's no friendship. It's gone. Yeah. Don't have friends like that, but also don't bite the hand that feeds you. That thing comes good out of it, so. Just something funny from the receipts that I was looking at. Some of them say, you know, the price really big on Venmo or Cash App, and then it just says completed at the bottom. On some of them, though, you could see heart emojis that the defendant sent thanking him, basically acknowledging that he received, received the, the money. money payment, sent a red heart emoji, and some of them were at very odd hours of the night, like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, some direct to Motel 6, some direct to other housing accommodations. It's so interesting. But I, like, I liked the receipts. The receipt. I liked the uh, I, I never paper trail. Right. Yeah. It's made it easy. It's true. Mm -hmm. And because when people say I gave him cash and say, even with an ATM slip, you never really know if the cash transferred hands but or this, is, this yeah. actually makes our job yes, much. Martin is suing his ex-girlfriend Jennifer Hancock and her ex-boyfriend Derek Jones for personal property. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2063, Martin versus Hancock Jones. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Martin, how old are you, sir? I'm 46. Who is this with you? This is my girlfriend, Kimberly. Case is not unusual, but sad. Mr. Martin, you had a long history of drug addiction. I did. From when to when? From 2002 until December 1st, 2020. I've been clean for two years on the 1st of December. Good for you. Thank you. Did you manage to get clean by going into a residential facility? I did, yes. How long were you in a residential facility? Um, I was in 23 days in an inpatient facility, and I was just over a month in an outpatient facility. Are you currently working? I am. What kind of work do you do? I'm a production manager for a soap and bath bomb company. How long have you been working for them? A year yesterday. Are you in touch with your folks? I am. Back in their good graces? Yes, ma'am. There was a time when that wasn't true. Correct. This is what I gather this case is about. Miss Hancock was your girlfriend. Yes. For how long? Um, we dated from November 2019 until April 2020. We separated for a few months and got back together in July 2020 and separated again in September 2020, so seven months. And it would be a fair statement, sir, that the reasons that you separated on both instances is because you relapsed into using drugs. Yes. And it would also be a fair statement that the first time you left the house at the defendant's request, you were unsuccessful permanently from ridding yourself of addiction, but you thought you were okay and you asked her to take you back. Yes. And she did. Yes. And you would have to acknowledge to me that made her, A, a forgiving person. Very. And someone who cared about you. Yes. I say all that to you because it's not my job today to exacerbate what appears to be a strained situation, which I assume from your papers has resulted in a final protective order in favor of Ms. Hancock, keeping you away from her for how many years? Permanently. Forever? Yes. And that was after a criminal case was resolved, and that was a criminal stalking case. Yes that was resolved, and it was resolved in her favor probably, and I don't know this for certain, probably with a plea from you. Yes. And when you enter a plea 
the judge always asks you, you understand your right to have a trial, you have a right to examine witnesses, you have a right to call witnesses, and by making this admission, it is the same thing as a guilty verdict. Correct. The judge did tell you that. Yes. I assume. I mean, I remember making those statements many, many times a long, long time ago. I'm surprised I still remember any of it. And you're supposed to remain away from her. Yes. So the first question I have... Well, I know why you're here. You're here because you say the last time she threw you out, and she threw you out not only because she found drugs that you were using again, but she had a fear that you were selling drugs out of the house, and she couldn't be involved with that, which is perfectly legitimate. You would have to acknowledge that. Absolutely. You'd also acknowledge, and I'm reading these papers sort of between the lines, your complaint, her answer, and the countersuit, that Miss Hancock had a child. Yes. A son. Yes. How old? When you 15 at the time. And uber impressionable age, and the fact that you were abusing drugs in the house, it really exposed him to something that a teenager shouldn't be exposed to because his mother has feelings for that person who's drug addicted. Yes. And I assume you had warm feelings at some point for this 15-year-old. Absolutely. At the time, your parents had asked you to leave the house. I was living with my parents at the time. Jennifer asked me to move into the house because Mr. Jones had placed a GPS tracker on her car and she was concerned about her safety with him. So, so you were dating at the time? Yes, I, I was living with my parents before I moved in, yes. Okay. Was that a happy situation? Um, at the time it was, yes. It, it didn't get difficult for life. Moved away from yeah. that. And when you moved in with Miss Hancock, according to you, you were not paying rent. Correct. You were, in fact, working. I was. And according to you, you were working, not paying rent, and buying certain things for the house in lieu of rent. That's what you say in your papers. I, 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 yes, I bought things that's for a, the house. That's, yes. Those were exactly the words that you swore to. You said, I also spent over $10,000 on things for her place Correct. in lieu of paying to live there. Correct. What things did you buy? I bought a dryer... Um, I, Dryer. I put $1,200 into her son's Ford, fixing it. I bought... Okay, so you paid for some things for her son. What else did you buy for the house? Um, we went to Costco several times and spent $1,000. Um, okay, so you towels. went... Just a sec. Yeah. I'm not interested in Costco several times. Yeah. You know, you do use toilet paper, don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> what else did you buy for the household? I bought a battery for a Ford car. I bought a Keurig, I bought a rug, towels. Um, I paid for the vacations while we were together. I bought some home lights for the outside. Come on, keep going. What else did you buy? And I... What else did you buy for the house? So far, we're not close to $10,000. That's all. Well, you swore to the fact that you spent $10,000, that you bought things for the house in lieu of rent. So far, you've given me maybe 2,500 bucks. Okay. And that includes a couple of trips to Costco. So I want to know, what else did you buy for the house? Did you buy televisions for the house? I bought televisions, Just a second. How many televisions did you buy? I bought two. And how much were they? Um, One was $1,700, the other one was $500. What else did you buy for the house? Those are the only items I remember buying for the house. Great. Now, what items do you claim that... Because that's what this is about so far. Mm -hmm. What items do you claim that Miss Hancock kept that belonged to you when she told you to leave the second time? I have text messages. No, no, don't tell me text. I don't want to hear text messages. I want to hear what items you claim are your property that she kept when she told you to leave the second time. That requires things. A fishbowl, a guppy, a pair of shoes, a tie. And if you say any of those things... I'm going to throw you out of here because I don't waste my time over guppies. Yeah. So tell me what you are alleging that she kept. Two TVs. Okay. An entertainment center. Just a second. You didn't tell me an entertainment... You told me you bought two TVs, $1,700 and $500. That would fit into the $10,000 of what you spent in the house. Entertainment center. What did you pay for the entertainment center? Originally, I paid $1,200. What else? I'm also asking for the return of a rehab center that she was kicked me out of, $2,500. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Keep going. Okay. And then uh, 47 Nintendo 64 games. 47 what? Nintendo 64 games. Okay. Now, so, Mr. Martin, because I'm going to make 
short shrift of this case, okay. as you can see right now. And your girlfriend looks like a nice lady. I don't know why you're here. You seem to have problems with boyfriends. Yeah, I gotta start picking them better. I do. This one, put a tracker on you. This one, you have a protective order permanently. You have to figure these things out before ultimately you get very hurt. Brian Martin claims his ex-girlfriend, Jennifer Hancock, and her ex-boyfriend, Derek Jones, owe for personal property. Jennifer and Derek are countersuing for harassment. Okay, so far, all the things that you told me that you bought for the house mm -hmm. barely add up to the $10,000 that you swore that you purchased for things for the house in lieu of paying rent. Do you understand? I do. If I may also add, when we were separated the first time, I sold my marital home for $47,000. I cashed it at my bank and I put it into an account with her that I was an authorized user on. I did not get that money back because she removed my name from the account. So that money also went to purchase things while we were together that were for the house. I don't remember specifically what we bought. It was close to $20,000 that was well, returned. Well, but Mr. Martin, I can understand that. But you know, this is a court. Okay. This is not a guessing game. This is not a game show. If you're saying that because of whatever reason you put your money into an account that she had access to and you spent money together on the house from that account, I can't help you with that. Okay. Do you understand? I do. I mean, it was a time that was a fog. Did Miss Hancock and or Mr. Jones ever return any property to you or to your parents' house? They did on November... Okay. 20th. That was in 2021? Yes. What month in 2021 did they return things to your parents' house? It was November 20th to the 21st during the night. Were you present? I was not. I did not live there. So I would assume that you found out that that property was delivered to your parents' house from either Miss Hancock or your parents? My parents. And your parents aren't here today? They are not. Your girlfriend was not there when it was when no. they were delivered. I have signed affidavits from them. From whom? From my parents well, about the property. Are your parents in any way disabled or are either one of them in the military? No, my father was in the military no longer. Well, that's the only reason you don't come in person to court if you're disabled and I might accept an affidavit or if you're unable to come to court by virtue of the fact that you're in the military. None of those things apply here, so I'm not taking any information that you have in an affidavit. Suffice it to say that they did, over a two-day period, return a lot of property to your parents' house. Yes. And that, based upon my rough guesstimates, because you can't help me out anymore with that, that you swore in your complaint, Mr. Martin, that you spent, in lieu of rent, $10,000... Yes. ...in the home. Yes. And that was specifically because you weren't paying any of the household expenses. Yes. And all of the things that you added up to me, I don't know what 47 video games are, but I assume that the 15-year-old played them more than you did. She says they were gifted to him. I don't know whether they were or they weren't. Certainly, if you want them back. Do you still have any of the video games? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you want the video games, sir, or do you want to leave them where they are? Um, I would like them. You would like them? Yes. Okay. Miss Hancock, I'm going to make this as easy as possible. I would like you, not the boyfriend, I would like you to pack up those video games. And do you live in the same town, area, whatever? Close enough. Is there a police <clears throat> precinct where you can drop them off? Yes. Do you know what precinct number that is? Um, I don't know the number, but I'm happy to drop them off at Bountiful City Police Department. Got it? Within five days from today, package up the videos that you have. No problem. You know, if, if any of them are damaged, I don't want to hear from you. We're talking about a year ago, a 15-year-old has played with them, whatever. She's going to give you back your video, okay. your 47 video games. Okay? Okay. <sighs> Take a breath. You have to say it's over. Tell me about your new girlfriend. Are you living together? We are, yeah. She's great. I love She's her. She's great. She's amazing. And you're fine? Yeah. And you're working? Mm hmm You have to put a period to this. Yes. A real period. I know. Okay. Ms. Hancock, you and your... Are you currently together, or is this an ex-boyfriend? Ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend. Ex well, you seem to have problems with boyfriends. Yeah, I gotta start picking them better. I do. This one, put a tracker on you. This one, you have a 
protective order permanently. You have to figure these things out before ultimately you get very hurt. Absolutely. Okay. I read not only your answer, and I've resolved Mr. Martin's claim. He is going to get all of his videos back. You know that Ms. Hancock and Mr. Jones have a cross-claim for harassment. I do. And that was not made part of the criminal case, any restitution. No. It was not. Did the district attorney request any restitution? No. Why not? Um, I was actually not involved. It was a criminal case, not a civil. Well, you were the complainant in the criminal case. The state of Utah is the one who filed it. But you were the complainant. E they may have filed it. It actually says right here, state of Utah is the plaintiff. Of course. So, I know that they... Yes, the, they I, did, I did contact the police and ask them to So do you yes. are, were the complainant. Okay, yes. You know, it's the state of New York versus... John Jones. It's the state of Utah versus John Jones, but there has to be a complainant. Yes. Somebody who was <clears throat> robbed, somebody who was the victim of stalking, somebody who was the victim of an assault. That's the complainant. That's yes. who you were. Sorry, I misunderstood. Did you ever ask the district attorney for compensation for lost wages or anything else that you suffered as a result of this stalking? No, I was not aware I could actually do that. Okay, well, that's not something that I consider. But there is part of your counterclaim that is particularly troubling to me. And it is your claim on the counterclaim that Mr. Martin, at some point, photoshopped pornographic pictures of you. Yes. And disseminated them. Yes. When did that happen? Um, it was left on um, Derek's car. And I'm not sure when, because Derek found it um, and didn't tell me about it for a while because he was upset and he didn't want to upset me about it. When did you find it, Mr. Jones? Uh, that would have been after this first bogus stocking injunction he filed and lost. Bogus? He filed a fraudulent stocking injunction. He filed stocking? Against me. And so it was won. after that? Mm hmm And that was May of 2021? One. One. I'm trying to tell Mr. Martin, and I don't know how to make it any more clear to him, that this path going forward has to be putting a period that in this whole scenario, you were the culprit. I did not do what they're claiming right there. Absolutely, 100%. I did not. You did not? Absolutely not. Okay. Let us assume, Mr. Jones, that you found on your car a pornographic picture that had been photoshopped with Miss Hancock's face and someone else's body. I'm assuming for a moment that that's true. Not that I have to look at it. I assume for the moment that's true. What proof do you have that Mr. Martin put that on your car? Well, I, the problem is I don't have any proof of that, but he had put other signs up. I have a police report. He was hanging signs on my property. He got arrested for doing that and yeah. tased. Okay. I mean... Yeah. What I'm asking you specifically, that's what I'm particularly concerned about. We, we couldn't prove it was him. Hmm? We couldn't prove it was him. Okay. Bye. Do you have a new boyfriend? No. I do not. <laughs> In what month was the protective order made final? May of 2022. Other than this experience, what happened? Oh, there's a fly. There's a fly. Oh, I'm, <laughs> Mr. Jones, I'm expert at flies. It's <laughs> not coming. You have an attitude, and you're not a baby. I mean, it's not as if you're 21 years old anymore. And if you have that within you, to have bad behavior against another person, that's there. Either you have it or you don't. Brian Martin has accused his ex-girlfriend, Jennifer Hancock, and her ex-boyfriend, Derek Jones, of keeping his personal property. Jennifer and Derek are countersuing, claiming Brian was harassing them. Okay, other than today's appearance, since that was issued in May of 2022, have you had any other contact with Mr. Martin? No. Have you? Yes. Tell me when. 5-7-2021, 20, uh, we called the police. No, no. Oh, Pay careful attention to my question, Mr. Jones. Between May of 2022 and today, have you had any contact with Mr. Martin? Just his, his files, his claims. He keeps filing protective orders against me. When was the last time he filed a protective order against you? Well, he tried filing one a week before this, and I have that A week as before well. what? Before this case. Okay. And I have what that day? police report. They told him no. Okay. So he didn't, they didn't allow him to file it? That one. But he's filed several others. Before, I'm talking about between May... Nope. That's the last one. That was the last one. I'd like to see it, please, Kevin.
Mr. Jones, do you have a protective order um, in your favor? I've I tried. Not tried. No, I don't. You do not. Okay. Your Honor, I have a video of catching him stalking my house, hanging signs. We submitted that. Uh, we also have the police report that he was arrested that day and tased. And tased? Yep. I have that report right here as well. I'd like to see it. Mr. Jones, I'm going to go back to just May of 2020. Since May of 2020, have you had any contact with him? Uh, the answer is either yes or no. Uh, yes. When? He's submitted letters to my family. He has emailed me. I'd like to see the letters he submitted to your family. These are some. He said, oh, there's more. These were cease and desist letters. Just one second. Just one second. What's this? Um, Mr. Jones texted me a text that said, says, tweaker, and that's who I... Just a second. Dear Miss Jones, who did you send this to? I'm not aware of the letter. May I see it? He took it to my, my rental. Shh. What are you giving me? These are letters he submitted to my houses or my rentals when he was trying to find me to just get a, just, just a second. I, yeah, I... This was in relation, Mr. Jones had a, st a temporary stalking injunction in place against him on February 7th, 2021. On, on excuse me, May 5th, 2021, he was served that stalking injunction. And that is when the incident with the uh, Bountiful Police took place that you're reading right now. Mm -hmm. He showed up to where I was getting my oil change. In addition to that, he has sent Facebook messages to my girlfriend that she's I'm going to tell you, on. I'm going to tell you that you see how calm you are? Not him. You understand that? Not him. Probably not him, but definitely not him. And I'm going to just suggest to both of you that neither one of you want any other legal action. You already have a lifetime protective order issued against you in favor of Ms. Hancock. Yes. So I'm just telling you, I'd stay as far away from him, Mr. Martin, as I possibly could go a mile out of your way rather than go anywhere near where he is. That's fine. That's what I'm doing now. Now, Mr. Jones, you have, and I've been around here for a long time, these kinds of buildings for a long time, you have an attitude. I can tell you have an attitude. And things may have been bad historically, but you know your behavior wasn't perfect historically. You would agree with that with Ms. Hancock, correct? Oh, absolutely. You would agree with that? Okay, and you're not a baby. I mean, it's not as if you're 21 years old anymore. And if you have that within you, to have bad behavior against another person, that's there. Either you have it or you don't. And what I'm suggesting to you is that this is not going to be a good outcome if this animus continues. She's not your girlfriend anymore. He's got a new girlfriend. You don't have anything to do with him anymore. Nothing. If you have to travel a mile out of your way to avoid going anywhere where he gets lunch, coffee, a jiffy lube, or anything else, I would suggest that you do it. I've done that. He keeps Good. filing protective orders. Good. Well, he can do that. So can you. And what I'm suggesting is that it's not... Sm Don't add fuel to this fire, madam. It's my job to try to temper it. If what you're going to do is to add fuel to this fire... I won't then I think that it's really not a smart idea. Just gonna, yeah. The plaintiff will get his 47 videos back within five days. They will be dropped off at the local police precinct. What? May I actually say there's only 21 that was ever given. So there's not 47. How many are, how many do you have? That's we what? have 19 of those games. Okay, 19. Yes. You have any other property that belongs to him? No. No. Okay, we're done here. 19. Five days. Police precinct. This court is adjourned. I'm disappointed because I've dealt with this man for over two years. He's just jealous of my awesomeness. I've moved on with my life. I have a new girlfriend, and I, I, I just want my things back. Whatever. I just want him out of my life. It's time to close the chapter. It's time to move on. I never want to see him again. I never want to hear from him again. People spend so much time with negative energy. Oh, yes. Sarah, the one thing that you and all other single people out there can take away from this case 
is that women are supposed to be smart. And clearly, she had a nose for bad boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because according to what we heard, the reason she invited him to come and live with her was because the... Different problem the, with a different defend, Right. Co-defendant, Mr. Jones, was really stalking her. Mm -hmm. And the same problem she had with the plaintiff. But stalking is an odd one. You have to be a little bit off to engage in stalking, to really terrorize somebody. Especially so, to the level of legal action for stalking. Yeah. Because I know the standard for getting a restraining order, even a temporary one, is very high, the standard. There has to be some pretty serious stuff that the judge reads. And he pled guilty. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Jones also acknowledged that he had not treated her well. So it's always sad to me when perfectly reasonable women, because sometimes because of their need to nest, yeah. will choose subpar mates. I think it's more important to hold on to your own energy than to allow it to seep into these negative, negative wells, wells that will just run you dry. You're absolutely right. Dean Miller is suing vehicle owner Robert Pena for damage after his 17-year-old son hit Dean's car. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2076, Miller versus Pena. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Pena, is that your son? Yes, it is. The one who was driving the car? Yes. Okay, good. You stand up next to your father. Mr. Miller, is your claim that the defendant's son hit your car that was parked in a parking lot? Yes, Your Honor. And it was parked in the parking lot of a high school? Yes, Your Honor. Do you work in that high school? Yes. As what? I'm a teacher. What do you teach? I teach what's called uh, on-site continuation. It's a continuation classroom for 10th through 12th grade students. Do you go to that school? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. On what date did you park your car when you allege it was hit? I was on March 8th, Your Honor. You were in school that day? Yes, Your Honor. Now, you should know that in reviewing this case, Mr. Miller, because he was not there when his car was hit. Correct. Correct. And so he alleges that it was you who hit his car and then left the scene. Your father said it was not you who hit his car, and there's no proof that it was you who hit his car. That's what your father said. Before you answer my questions, I'm going to tell you that Mr. Miller has a video that he says was taken by school cameras that were zoned onto the parking lot that demonstrates that you actually did hit his car and leave. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. So now we're going to go back to March 8th, and you're going to tell me what happened with Mr. Miller's car. So I drive myself to school every day, or at the time I was driving myself to school because that was my only way of getting to school. Did you have a driver's license? At the time, no, I did not have a driver's so license. So you were driving a car without a driver's license? Yes, Your Honor. And what kind of a car were you driving? It was a 1991 Camaro. Where did you get the car from? Me and my dad had gone off the street. It was a project car. How old are you? 17. Did you try to take a driving test? Yes. When? Back when I had turned 17, actually, in February of last year. And you didn't pass it? No. Did you take the written test? No. What did you take in February? The practical test. Just the practical test, the driving test? Yes. And you failed that? Yes. So despite the fact that you failed that, you drove the car, and your father knew that you were driving the car without a license? That's a yes, yes or a no? Yes. Was there insurance on this car, Mr. Pena? No, there wasn't. So no insurance, no license. So far, not good parenting. You understand that, Mr. Pena? Yes. Great. OK, so you drove yourself to school and? Um, there's a parking lot that all the students, teachers, um, anyone who goes to school, really, they can park Yes, at. nobody suggests you were trespassing in a place you weren't supposed to be. Yeah, so every morning um, I would park in... Not the everyone, look at me. That day, Mr. Miller's car... Yes, Your Honor. That day, March 8th, I came to school as usual and I parked in my area and then one of the on-school deputies that the school has, he pulled up right behind me as I parked, and he asked me for my information, he asked me for my name, my school ID. I want to know what happened with Mr. Miller's car. Oh, nothing happened with Mr. Miller's car. So what you're telling me is that you did not hit Mr. Miller's car. Is that what you're telling me? Yes, Your Honor. What car were you driving that day? 1991 Camaro. What color is it? Red. How long have you been going to that school? It's my fourth year going. How many other people drive a 1991 Camaro? Red. Mm, nobody. Nobody. And so I'm going to watch this video 
Sarah, do we have the video? I have it. So, in mm -hmm. there. Wait, you'll see it. Okay. You had a truck? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so there's no question you hit the truck. Do you want me to show you the video? Um, no, Your Honor. Okay. Well, if you don't want to see the video, if that's because you told me a lie. Oh, yes, I'd like to see the video. Absolutely. Going to watch very carefully you pulling into a spot and the truck moved as you were pulling in. Have they shown you the video, Mr. Pena? They showed me a different version of that video. Well, I've just seen the version that I saw. Got it? Yes, Your Honor. Saw the truck move, did you? Yes, it did. When you were pulling in next to it? Yes, I was. When you were pulling in next to it? So that didn't happen because there was an earthquake. That happened because you hit the truck? Yes, Your Honor. Fine. Now we understand each other, Mr. Pena? Yes. Great. That's a yes. Okay. Can I see pictures of your truck, please, and the estimate to repair it? Yes, Your Honor. Have you seen the photographs? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Totally consistent, right? Okay. Mr. Miller, you're from California? Yes, Your Honor. Do you regularly teach today? Yes. So you had to take a day off? Yes, I have a substitute today, yes. How many days off are you allowed? Ten per year. I've accumulated quite a few because I don't take many days off. You get paid for those days? I get compensated because I have sick days or personal necessity days. The reason I'm asking you these questions, Mr. Miller, because it's no question that you are entitled to have your car fixed. But that's, to me, even though that that's all you're requesting, I think the fact that Mr. Pena allowed his son to drive a car without insurance and without a license, not only without a license, but knowing that his son took a driving test the month before and failed it, which means that he was not a good driver not a good enough driver to get a driver's license. And I have a lot of people in my family that don't drive well, that I don't like to be in the car with, but they all have driver's licenses because they managed to pass a driving test. So I know that you are only requesting the $1,524, but I'm actually awarding you $2,500. Thank you, Your Honor. And that's for the aggravation of, instead of Mr. Pena saying to you, I'm sorry, my son hit your car, because either his son lied to him... Your Honor, can I say something? Either his son lied to him or his son told him the truth, but he lied to me. And he's the grown-up. He set an example for his son that said it's okay to break the law. Not only for you, because you take the car to school. Take the car to school, even though you failed. Take the car to school. It has no insurance. If you hit somebody in that car and you seriously injure them, that car has no insurance. Car has no insurance. He has nothing to lose. Car has no insurance, but the person who he hit, person whose property he may have destroyed, they have no recourse. You understand, sir? That's a bad parental example. You want to say something to me or not? Yes, I do. I don't care that you didn't like it. That's not, as a parent, the lesson you should be teaching. And whether or not you like the way the sheriff spoke to him, that is totally irrelevant to me. Later. I paid, <laughs> I paid as much as I could supporting him. I wasn't getting paid rent for his room. What happened is you both sort of took advantage of this rent moratorium. Not true. Dean Miller claims vehicle owner Robert Pena owes for damage after his 17-year-old son hit Dean's car. Go ahead. My thing I didn't like was how he got approached. I don't care whether you like Th it or that's not. That's what I do. I don't care whether you like it or not. Did your son come home from school that day and say, I hit somebody's no, car? No, he didn't. He no, he didn't. Nowhere. And when, just a second. And when you asked him whether he hit somebody's car, what did he tell you? Just be careful. He said, I think. He I got, think. He felt I, just a second. By I think. The sheriff well, and him. I don't care that you didn't like it. I that's don't think not as a parent. Car. That's not as a parent the lesson you should be teaching. First of all, you allowed your son to violate the law. You allowed it. 
And then, I mean, I would certainly know whether I caused that much damage. He knew that that car moved. So either he lied to you or you lied to me. And whether or not you liked the way the school official spoke to him or the sheriff spoke to him, that is totally irrelevant to me. That shouldn't be the takeaway from this. The takeaway from this is you're supposed to follow the rules. The rules are meant for everybody, and that includes you and your kid. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $2,500. We're finished here. Thank this you. This court is adjourned. Police officer came uh, behind me when I parked and accusing me that I'd hit someone. The school deputy saw the video, knew the car, so he approached the student. The person who I supposedly hit came out with a megaphone yelling at me. There is no megaphone. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Tell me that I'd hit him. So I was kind of like freaking out. I didn't really know what to think. If it happened to me, he could hit someone else. And I, I didn't know I hit your car. Like, did I hit your car? Like, I, I didn't even know what to think. I, I could have sworn I did not. This was fortunate that it was just a parked car in a parking lot. It is time to get his license. Yes, that's correct. It is time to get the car fixed and just get some closure on this. In our family, we would call that contact a love tap. <laughs> and as yeah. someone who has had a few run-ins potentially with stationary objects, Not I will tell you. Not potentially. <laughs> I will tell you, you know when you hit a stationary object, even if it's just a light little love tap. Yeah. So I, I just thought it was outrageous that the defendants, father and son, tried to, they knew that there was a video and still took the position of, nope, nope, nope. Well, didn't, his, father, his father's it? position was, I didn't like the way they spoke to my son, and therefore, I'm not responsible. They shouldn't have spoken to him. I mean, he's 17 years old, but he looks like a man. He's taller than his father, you know. You have to take like, responsibility. But you have to take responsibility and not drive a car, especially. <laughs> you failed a driving test. The most basic thing, I, I mean, you know, we have people... I will people... say, I did pass on the first try, so... Yes, but we have people in our family who actually did not. <laughs> okay, yes. And they, they didn't drive... Named? And they didn't drive a car. <laughs> Yeah. until they could pass a driving and test. And their parents were the first ones to say, no, 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 no. No, no, no. shot until you right. pass that test. Absolutely. So parents need to be responsible as well. Right. Case 2104, Berkland versus Lefkowitz. All party, please step forward. Shannon Berkland is suing her former roommate, Ian Lefkowitz, for unpaid rent and eviction costs. Ms. Berkland, how long had you lived in your residence? Prior to the defendant moving in? Yes. Two years. And how long did you live there with the defendant? A total of five years. That's you lived the in defendant, the defendant, I'm sorry, three years. Three years. This month would have been. And for most of that three-year period, what kind of work do you know that the defendant did? Computer work and music producing. How do you support yourself, sir? I produce music. I don't do computer work. Produce music for whom? Various artists and brands and whatever. Uh, How long have you been doing that? Since I was 13 years old. How old are you now? 32. You have a corporation or an LLC? Um, not um, currently standing, but I, I do have one that is uh, out of uh, commission right now that needs to be uh, reestablished. When was the last time you filed tax returns? Last... Um, last uh, April. Last April, yeah. And on your tax returns that you filed, how much did you indicate that you earned? I receive um, royalties from a company called... And they take my taxes out automatically, so I'm, I'm not sure how much. I'm asking you how much you reported your gross income was when you filed your tax returns in April. They, uh, they come automatically is what I'm saying. I, I didn't file them. They're, they're paid for and filed automatically by the company that distributes my royalties. So is what you're saying you didn't file tax returns in April? I assume that they're filed automatically through this company that um, pays me. Mr. Lefkowitz, when was the last time you put a stamp on tax returns that you sent to the government? I do not know. Ever? Um... Did think? No, Ever? Like I said, where I make most of my money, if not all my money, comes through a company called which they take out the taxes automatically before paying me. So I've never filed through that. I just assumed that it was already taken care of in that way. You assumed wrong. OK. OK. There came a time, Mr. Lefkowitz, you lived there for three years, but there came a time when you stopped paying rent. Correct. And what was your rent when you moved in with the plaintiff? $1,200 a month. You had your own room? Yes. Bathroom? Yes. You moved in in what month and year? 2019 in uh, October. And as you said, most of your money comes from royalties, and I assume that's royalties on past work. Yes. And you've been existing on that for how long? 
eight years or so. So how much do you make from these royalties? You pay $1,200 a month rent, you have a car. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, it's not an answer. Yes, I you have a how car. Much do I make? So you have a car, you have insurance. Yes. What kind of car do you have? I have a Honda Clarity. What year? It's a lease, it's a 2021. And how much do you pay a month for the lease? 395. Does that include insurance or does it not include insurance? No, it does not include insurance. So you pay an additional how much for insurance? About 350. So you spend $700 a month for your car. Correct. And let's get back to, you moved in in October of 2019, your rent was $1,200 a month. And you lived there until when? Until about two months ago. So September 4th or 3rd is when I moved all my stuff out. And when was the last month you paid rent? That would have been in December of 2021. <sighs> so you lived there January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. And that part of September, so at least eight months that you lived there and didn't pay rent. Mm -hmm. Well, uh -huh. I, wasn't, I wasn't there for August, pretty much the Your entire... things were there. Sure. If your things are there, you're there. Okay. Because that's part of what she's suing for, rent that you didn't pay. Mm -hmm. Are you still living there? No. Why not? I was evicted. When? The exact date is August 2nd. I do have my paperwork for notice to vacate and all just that. Just a second. That. Sure. On August 2nd of... I'm sorry, that was the court date, and that's when the judgment was made, was August And 2nd. when did you move out? Uh, two weeks later. That's not true. And you were evicted for non-payment of rent? Yes, for two months. Yes. yes. Just a second. You were evicted for non-payment of rent? Yes, for two months. Well, show me that it was for two months. I just want to see that it was for two months and what two months those were. That page right there. No, you didn't leave until, let's say, September 1st. That sounds more like it. You didn't leave until September 1st. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I did mistakenly speak. I, I do remember that the judge... Don't tell me what the judge said. I'm asking you when you left. ...gave me six weeks from that date of August 8th. What so I left September uh, 8th. And you left at about the same time. I left prior, but I, I called the, my neighbor at... Uh, just a second. Yeah. You left at about the same time. A few days before. Fine, that's at about the same time. She actually left after that. Um, I talked to a neighbor that said around the 14th that she was still there. You can't tell me what the neighbor okay. said. The sir. that's why I correct. stopped you before. Correct. Well, I know there's a moratorium for COVID, and the government shut my business down. That's what he so says. I knew that I had protection. He's but saying the exact same thing you are in his answer. You two no, are hey, soulmates. Hey, no, Your Honor, I'm sorry. Shannon Berkland claims her former roommate, Ian Lefkowitz, is responsible for unpaid rent. Okay, this eviction notice is dated May 26, and it says that you didn't pay April or May. Correct. But both of you lived there in June. Did you pay June? Yes. Show me proof. Show me proof that you paid June and um, July. I... Show me proof you didn't pay April and May. Show me proof that you paid... My proof... Your proof. Is I wanna... in, in the fact that I don't owe uh, any rent except for when the moratorium lapsed and I... No, 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 no. I don't have a receipt. I don't have a receipt for payment. Then just say I just... didn't pay rent for June and July. I did not pay rent for June That's, and July. That's well, just answer that question. So you didn't pay rent Correct. for yeah. June and July. Yeah. Well, here we go. And you didn't pay for April, May, June and July. I know you didn't pay for August. There's no question you didn't pay for August, and you were actually there in August, so you didn't pay for five months. I guess yes. Okay, y yes, yes. And the reason that you didn't pay rent for those five months was what? I had spent all my savings on paying rent, and I had none left. Uh, I paid, well, I paid as much as I could supporting him. Just a second. The best I could, and I... <laughs> What happened is you both sort of took advantage of this rent moratorium. Not true. Well, if you didn't pay rent for April, May, June, July, and August, what were you doing? Waiting for him to pay his rent because I couldn't afford to you pay, didn't pay for any, my station. Just a the, second. Yeah. You didn't pay any rent. You didn't say to the landlord, I have a roommate. 
I can't take care of him. I'm giving you my half of the rent. Well, I know there's a moratorium for COVID, and the government shut my business down. That's what he so says. I knew that I had protection. That's what he says. He's but, saying the exact same thing you are in his answer. Did he um, go to court and do the paperwork and do the filings and and who cares? And I do. Who cares? I don't. Each of you seems to be living. You operate your hair business out of your house. In addition to just another business, yes. Whatever. You operate your hair business mm -hmm. out of the house. He operates, I don't know what he does, but I know he has, he's 32 years old, supports himself, spends $700 a month on a car, spent for a long time $1,200 a month rent, and can't remember the last year or the last <sighs> decade that he filed tax returns. So whatever it is, this is your problem, Ms. Berkland, and this is what I actually didn't understand when I read your complaint, because what you're looking for is eight months' rent from him. Correct. <laughs> you didn't shouldn't pay the rent. I shouldn't be evicted. I asked him to leave every month that he didn't right. pay me. Should have read a cutter. I had a business as a hairdresser, and I went out to rent a station, and I, I was I, out I, for the, four months to I pay for a station. It, it doesn't because matter. Because I wanted to go back to be my nice space that I had created for myself and I've worked my butt off for and my clients liked. I wasn't getting paid rent for his room. I wanted to move my studio into his room and make it my hair salon so I can have two businesses now out of my home. I have zero income, zero businesses. My life has not been easy and this home was the one thing that I've worked my ass off for. It's the only thing in life that I loved. Uh, Miss Berkland, but did you say to your landlord, "Yes, I have a roommate. Yes, he's not paying me his half of the rent, but I want to show you in good faith. I am going to give you my portion of the rent." You didn't do that. Yes, I did, Your Honor. Well, show me. I just a second. Show me. You All I know is they say this is your evidence for the full amount of the rent for April and May. And I know you didn't pay June, July, August, and September. I know you yes, didn't pay sorry, that. I'm not so I'm asking me. you, just show me some proof, Miss Berkland, that you said to your landlord, who is also in business, business of renting space for which they are requesting rent paid in a timely fashion, and then they've got two people who decide, well, we have a rent moratorium. I'm not in any worse position now than before, so I'm just not going to pay rent. Your Honor, I was... Just show me that you made okay. partial payment to the landlord for April, May, June, July, and August. Um, I don't have that because I was protected under the law. Okay, good. Have, and so is he. Wait, Case is wait. dismissed. I We're have finished. One question Goodbye. For you. I proved, Goodbye. Listen, I can prove you two are so. You just attempted to pay said, full rent. You two. On and I was able to bring my business into the house. You two I are soulmates. You both relied. No, Your Honor, I'm sorry. How? This court is adjourned. Soulmates. <laughs> you both took advantage of a law and you both That's lost. Sure. Goodbye. I have nowhere to operate both of my businesses. I created one during COVID. We both exercised our rights under California tenant laws. And Which I would have had I had a room that he wouldn't leave. You know, they, that's just what it is. Every month I pleaded with him. It never happened. I cried, I fought. She never asked me to leave crying, approached me, nothing. If it can be helped, don't have a roommate. I'm glad you didn't give her any money. But if you were going to award any money in this case, it should go to the landlord because the plaintiff did the exact same thing using the exact same legal loophole that was created during COVID for people who really were struggling and not being able to afford their rent. And now she sues him for doing the exact same thing that she did. So the landlord is really the only one out here. That's correct. Yeah. And if you could write a check to the landlord, that would be fine. But the landlord isn't a party. I have a feeling that there are a lot of very small landlords, you know, not people that own giant buildings, but people who have, you know, their real estate businesses are small. They mm -hmm. may have two or three or four apartments that they rent. They maintain them, whatever. She was living there for a while, clearly happy with the situation mm -hmm. because she lived there for five years. Well, why... Just not pay your rent if you're still doing hair in the yep. apartment. That's a business. That's mm -hmm. what you're doing. He's still collecting his royalties. same royalties, yep. which you think somebody else should be reporting on their tax return. Yeah. I don't know. People have to really grow up. I'm getting so... <laughs> I'm losing my patience yeah. so quickly. Maybe I'm losing it a little young. <laughs> Maybe. I think I'm... Ellen Henderson.
is suing her ex-roommate, Tara Williams, for breaking a lease and filing a false restraining order. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2023, Henderson versus Williams. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Henderson, you and your kids and Ms. Williams and her kids decided to rent a house together. Yes. And when was that initially? We moved in January 21st of 2021. How large a house was it? Five bedroom. And who moved in with you? Me, my two children, Tara, her three children, and... The third roommate? Yes. What was your share of the rent? The share of the rent? Yours. Fourteen ninety-five. And yours? We paid, me and her split it, and then took cash from... The third roommate? Yes, so fourteen ninety-five too. And you lived there for a year? What I gather is sort of towards the end of the year, things were getting a little testy between the two of you, either because of you or because of the kids, you had children, and things weren't working out so that both of you were not real happy with each other. Would that be a fair statement? Yes. It, it started earlier in 2021. I'm sure, but at the time that the lease was up, you both weren't really happy with each other. And according to your complaint, she left... You were stuck paying the rent, and she had signed a renewal of the lease, and you want her to pay her portion of the rent until you found a new roommate, which you actually found a new roommate several months later. The defendant says she told you that she was contemplating living with you for another year, that her speculation that you went into her room and took a signed copy of the lease and gave it to the rental agent or whoever it was... It would have been in the kitchen in my well, area where my neighbors were. Whatever. Yeah. And it was never her intention to sign a second lease. Your lease was up in January of 2022. Yes. The defendant was away for a period of time. When was the defendant away just prior to January of 2022? She went to Hawaii for a week. When? I think she left on January 8th. Give or take a day, I don't remember. And did you return the signed copies of the lease to the landlord? No, they were turned in in December. By both of you? For the lease renewal, all three of us re-signed in December. And I have a copy of that. What I'm asking you is, were they turned in? Because that's very easy to verify. Were they all turned in before she went to Hawaii? Yes. Okay. I'll see what you have. Well, Ms. Williams, if it's your statement that she took your signed copy of the lease and turned it in without your permission at some point when you were in Hawaii, that's what you're alleging. If this doesn't bear that out, Ms. Williams, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't lend itself to the truth of that statement because this indicates that the two of you and the third roommate signed this on December the 19th. Then you turned it in. Then it was turned in. That was before you went to Hawaii. The landlord signed it on December 20th, which means that if the landlord signed it on December 20th, he signed it before you went to Hawaii, which means she couldn't have stolen your copy of the lease. Right. Do you understand? Yeah, no, I'm not stating I was in Hawaii when she turned it in. I left for Hawaii January 8th through the 18th. I understand that. Okay. I was unaware. Shh. When our lease was up for renewal, we weren't getting along, and I was on the fence about spending another year with Ellen. In December, we received a copy of the lease renewal. I felt pressured into signing it, but then we told Ellen we needed more time, just you. I had to leave town. Well, I don't know, you don't have any witness here, because you say I had to leave town, so I decided to hold on to the lease until I returned. Where did you go? I went to Hawaii. Well, that was in January. Yes. Well, but the landlord got a copy of the signed agreement December 20th. I didn't know it was turned in. Oh, well, I, I don't emails, know whether so it was turned I, in or not. So I, I emailed RentCon, okay. and I have messages stating it was received from Ellen. Okay. I'll see what you have. Okay. No. The next. This doesn't say that at all. The lease renewal was signed by all three tenants. Correct. The lease was signed by all three tenants, and it was received before you went to Hawaii on the 20th of December. Okay. Easy. You moved out in February? January 31st of 22. When was the first lease up? The 22nd what? of January 22. So you stayed on after the lease was up? Yes. Why? I wasn't completely moved out yet, 
when well, I was in Hawaii, bad. I had reached out to Rincon about paying extra to pay the extra few days. No. Okay. And when did you get a new roommate? Did you keep blowing her off or did you answer her? No, I didn't. No, no, just a second. I did not. Did you blow her off or did you answer? So the answer is you blew her off. You blew her off. Yes. About the rent that she was stuck with. Right. Right. Okay, good. Ellen Henderson claims her ex-roommates, Tara Williams, broke their lease and filed a false restraining order against her. Tara is countersuing for her security deposits, utilities, and damaged property. Okay, when did you get a new roommate? She moved in April 18th. Did she pay January's rent? Yes. So you're talking about February and March? February, March, and then prorated April. Well, February and March, 1495. Twenty-nine ninety. Okay. The next part of your case involves filing for a false restraining order. Did you file a restraining order, Miss Williams, against Miss Anderson? Yes. I'd like to see what it says. No, no, don't give me that whole thing. Your application for a restraining order. I'd like to see what your application for. Don't hand them that whole thing. I said I'd like to see what your application for a restraining order said. Okay, so what you say is she sent you three letters. You're asking because she sent you three letters. They were annoying. I want to know what she was asking for in those letters. Was she asking for rent money? Was she asking for rent? Yes. Okay, so she was asking for her money. Yes. For your rent money for yes. the months that she didn't have a roommate. Well, that's yes. not harassment, madam. There's more, but... You what? Know, th there's more. She's telling me that I stole some of her stuff and stuff. In, in the first letter, it says, if you don't pay this in five days, we'll take... Yeah, she's vacation. allowed to say that. Okay. Yeah, which so is she totally wrote to fine, you. but she sent it two more times, emailed it, and then showed up at my children's school while I was dropping them off. Did you keep blowing her off, or did you answer her? No, I didn't. No, no, just a second. I did not. Did you blow her off, or did you answer? So the answer is you blew her off. Yes, I was fine with going to court. You blew her off? Yes. About... The rent, which she was stuck with. Right. Right. Okay, good. Twenty nine ninety is what she owes you for rent. Now, part of your counterclaim for get money for damages, you get security deposit. How much was her security deposit? We paid equally between me and her. No, how much did she pay? It was half of How much was your security deposit? One thousand seven forty seven and fifty cents. One seven four seven. Is that right? Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And where is her security deposit? In our lease, it states that if you break the lease, the deposit stays with the house. And I have an email from the property management stating that same thing, that she signed a lease saying that if she leaves early, the money stays with the house until everyone moves out. So the security deposit, if you and your new roommate keep the house safe, you're going to get back. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And you don't allege any damage... Is that correct? I had to clean up the carpets in her room upstairs and... Okay, do you have an invoice for that? No, I did it myself. Okay. 2990 yeah. less 1747? $1,243. So far, she owes you $1,243. That's less the security deposit, which you and your hopefully neat roommate will get back. May I say something about what? the payments for rent? So it was me and her doing equal rent at $17.95.25. So that's what I paid. Me and her paid that in January, and I paid that. I paid the entire amount in February, March. I understand she was no longer paying rent. So, You're getting the rent, but I'm deducting so from pay, that. My portion is $17.95, and that's what I'm asking her for, because that's what her portion was when okay. she moved out as well. Just a second. Am I correct that she, at the time you moved in, individually, paid as a security deposit $1,747. Is that correct? Yeah, but I'm talking about the rent payments. It's not $1,495, it's $1,795. Was your rent each month $1,495 or $1,795? $1,495. Can I see it? Anybody have any proof of that? I printed out the log, but she paid us $300 each in cash. So there's no... She is on the lease, but it does not show she was paying cash. You mean... 
the third roommate. Yes. The third roommate. Right. So your amount was fourteen ninety five. Correct. I got it. Okay. Up until Good. the end of December. Okay, I'm finished. Now the next part of your counterclaim is for utilities. Security deposit you get back. What utilities do you think she utilities, owes you? Uh, she did not pay me November, December, January, or February closing for utilities. Did you pay them? I paid them. I'd like to see where you paid them. No, don't give me a whole bunch of papers. I don't want to see a whole bunch of papers that I have to go through. I want to see what utilities there were, when you Just sent like her, bank when bank you bank sent bank. her a statement of what the utilities were. Yes. I assume it worked that she paid you a portion of the utilities. Yes, it was What split. portion of the utilities did you pay? We split it equally the whole time we were there. Okay, so whatever utility bills that were paid by her, you were supposed to pay half. Correct. Which did you? I, my last payment to her was December 4th for Spectrum, Water, Trash, and Gas. That was 12-4. Mm -hmm. How much did you pay her? 364.61. Okay, just a second. Did she pay you 364 in December? She did for prior months. So that was for November. That covered November. If it was paid in December, that covered November. It would have been more so October. I oh, I ran can't, I can't get in, I okay. can't get yes, involved I, with I, that, I, madam. Don't give him a whole bunch of papers. Don't give him a whole bunch of papers. December and January statement for utilities. You were gone in February. Yes. December and January bills for utilities. Did you pay those? I did not because she left me with all the rent. I understand that, but now you're getting your rent. Now we're going to settle up on the utilities. What and I didn't include it in the lawsuit, but she still owes me for trash. And I have a list of stuff that she took of mine that I did write. I'm, I'm not interested about. in it, Miss Henderson. And it didn't work out. You should be very happy. She's gone. You didn't like her. She overcharged me utilities with her business expenses. Okay. Every month we live there. Did you come in contact with her on the 25th of May in a pedestrian car incident? Not that I recall. About one minute to eight in the morning. Who drives a white minivan? Me. Ellen Henderson has accused her ex-roommate, Tara Williams, of breaking their lease. Tara claims she filed the restraining order because Ellen was stalking her. Miss Henderson, it didn't work out. You should be very happy. She's gone. You didn't like her. She overcharged me utilities with her business expenses. Okay. Every month we live there. Do we have a bill for December and January? If there's anything here that's not December and January, I'm dismissing that part of your claim. And I already have a bill that's dated April of 2022. Right. That was for January and February water. That's 390. Billing date 414. No. It was... No. I want you, because I'm losing my patience slowly. Please... Read out the bills, the total bills for December and January only. Sarah, get ready. Can it go till February 1st? Yes. Okay. By the way, while she's looking for that, did you go to her kid's school? I dropped, yeah, I served her a letter of default and a cease and desist letter in the parking lot of her school, kids. Mm -hmm. Because she didn't pick up a letter from the mailbox, she knew it was coming from me. And I had to go back to the mailbox and get it after a month. Okay. And I didn't know where she lived. I didn't know else, how else to reach her. Okay. Did you come in contact with her on the 25th of May in a pedestrian car incident? Not that I recall. About one minute to eight in the morning. Who drives a white minivan? Me. What was the date? May 25th. Oh, yeah. That was her kid's school. That was her kid's school when okay. I delivered the letter. Well, that's why she filed for protective order against you. Not unreasonable. It was dismissed after a hearing or it was just dismissed? It was dismissed after a hearing. Yeah. Part of your claim for filing a false restraining order is dismissed. I could actually see why you would get frightened if somebody went to your kid's school to serve you papers. Okay. What are the bills for utilities? Can I just say something? Sure. I had to give her those letters in order to file for small claims. Okay. I, had, I had tried to mail it, 
and she didn't I, go to the post office. I, under, I got it. I got it. Could we have the utilities? Which utility and what is it? You should have all this together for me and not make it difficult. Okay. This is why you were coming. Don't read out the numbers, okay. what the utility is for what month and the amount. So water, 257.94. Water for February was 132.09. For 1203 bill date for electricity was 167. What date? 1223. That's December. Yes, I but thought that we was were for doing November. December. I thought we were doing December, January. For December, but you wouldn't have gotten December's bill in December. You would have gotten it in January. It was prepared 1203. Right, but that's dealt with November. It okay. was prepared 1203. They're not prorated. Come on, let's go. Okay, uh, 204, this was prepared for. Electricity, 7472. Okay. This one was for the date that I ended of 128 to 201. It was 1278 for Edison, electricity. Let's move on. And then this is gas for 1229 to 127. It was 3704. And then the okay. ending charges was 572. Got it. Yes. $5.72. I can't believe it. Okay. Would you add those up? Yeah. And your arrangement with her, Ms. Henderson, was that you each paid half of the utilities. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, can I say something about that, too? Back in April or May of 2021, I had went to her to speak and ask about me paying less for water, gas, and electric because she brought all of her Airbnb laundry. She has a cleaning business. And our washers and dryers were going constantly. And? And she didn't meet me halfway, so I was stuck paying okay. half. Fine, fine. I have the total for you ready. 507.51. Divide it by two. 254 dollars. 1243 less 254. 1243 is what she's owed now, less the security deposit. I love this case. Couldn't be more excited about it. 989. Judgment for the plaintiff, 989. Your Honor, I finished. Thank you very much. We're done. Court is adjourned. Thank you. It's, it's sad that I lost, but I put up a good fight. I'm happy with the decision. She didn't want to live with me that there were issues. Why would you turn in a lease to renew for a whole nother entire year with someone? It's been a lot of stress. I wanted her to file suit so I could see her in court in order to take care of the, the matter. I had nowhere to go and I didn't think she was going to renew, to be honest. Zero roommates. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> I mean, I went into it thinking that this was going to be a good situation. I really got along and I loved her and her kids and I don't know that I could have done anything different. So the new phenomenon that I've seen over this past generation for as long as I've been in this business is because of the economy, people having to live together that are neither in love with each other or related <laughs> to each other. And I actually think, Sarah, that's such a very hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't the first case that we've had that involved adults and their kids having to, for financial reasons, move in with each other. I think I've always said, and I don't know how you feel about this, that I'd rather live in a shoebox alone <laughs> than with strangers mm -hmm. in more comfortable surroundings. Sure. I think that's a tough call that a lot of people are having to make nowadays with the cost of living and inflation. Young There's people. Young people. Two single mothers trying to live together with their children to give them a home environment. So it's it's a risk that you take when you don't know the other person. Even when you do know them, we see family members fighting they all the time. It. So I think it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, I don't know. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that people have to make those kinds of choices for happiness shouldn't create that kind of stress. I think the best thing you can do is have a concrete contract to fall back on for if something like this happens because yeah, it's a very no, stressful situation. Yeah, but nobody wants to take that risk. Yeah. Nobody wants to, who's signing a lease agreement, say, if yeah. it doesn't work out, this is what happens. Well, that's never between the tenant and the yeah. landlord. Mm -hmm. As between those two people, maybe it would be enforceable, yeah. but not between the two tenants and the landlord. Landlord still gets his money. Landlord gets his money. Stay with people who you love yeah. <laughs> or you have to love. True. <laughs> is suing her buyer, Charity Hoovener, for the cost of a golden retriever puppy. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2188, Slanninger versus Hoovener. Thank you. You're welcome.
Ms. Saneker, is this your boyfriend? Hi, yes. Uh, this is my, my boyfriend and the father of our uh, two-year-old child. Okay, you could stand up with her. In addition to a two-year-old child, you also had two dogs. Where were you living at the time of this incident? Uh, so we were living in our uh, house. In your house where? In Redford, Michigan. Do you own the house or rent it? We rent it. Are you still living there? Yes, we are. Do you work? Uh, no, I... Uh, You're not... The answer is no. I am a writer. I'm also two months pregnant, too, so... The question is, do you work and make a living? Yes. At what? Writing. Okay. Who do you write for? Uh, myself, self-publishing. Well, how much money did you make last year self-publishing? Zero. Zero? Yeah. So the answer is, you don't work and you don't make any money. And what about you, boyfriend? I currently, at the moment, am a custodian for the Hills School District. Okay, and how much do you earn? Uh, I earn sixteen fifty an hour. And what's your rent? Uh, it's uh, fourteen forty five. Who pays it? There's no question. You don't. <laughs> uh, he he does. I do. Impossible. Not sixteen dollars an hour. Our brother currently lives with my what? Bro my brother lives with us as well, so we have a roommate. That's how we pay for it. And he pays some of the rent. Yes. Uh, is your rent current? Yes. And you have a car. I do. So you have car and insurance. You I have do. a car? Well, I somehow do. you're very economical. Now, you had two dogs. You had financial hardship, according to your complaint, and you could no longer take care of the dogs. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. What kind of dogs were they? Our uh, one-year-old um, dog named Courage, he is a Border Collie, an Australian Shepherd mix. He's a Border Collie? Yes. Where did you get him from? We got him from a breeder back in 2021. It was probably December 2nd of 2021. And what was the other dog? The other dog, her name uh, was Danny. She was a purebred golden retriever puppy that uh, we had bought, purchased um, October 7th, 2022. Yeah. Okay. Now, how much did you pay for the Border Collie? We paid $500 for the Border Collie. I'm still figuring out how you're all budgeting. And how much did you pay for the Golden Retriever? We also paid $500 for the Golden Retriever. Where did you get the money from? A tax return. So let me understand this. You have a two-year-old baby? Yes. You have a two-year-old baby. You got tax returns from the only income from the house, which is his, where he earned $16 an hour. And what you did was you spent $1,000 of your tax return on two dogs. I just... Um, Clarifying that in my own mind. Huh? Yeah, yes. That would be a right. Okie dokie. When you could no longer either physically and or financially take care of the dogs, you put an ad on the internet. What part of the internet? Uh, we, we put the ad on Craigslist and Hoobly. Craigslist and? Hoobly. It's like another Craigslist type online. You have a copy of the ad? Yes, I do. I'd like to see them. Okay, so you put ads for both dogs. One, you said small rehoming fee, not a breeder, needs a new home, call for details. The other is the one year old Border Collie Aussie Mix, and you had rehoming fee of $200. Yes. Okay. This says absolutely nothing about fostering short term, you get the dogs back, nothing and no other criteria in here. Yes. Nothing. So this is your complaint. The defendant answered your ads. You brought the two dogs over to her. She gave you $100. Yes. Yes. You left the two dogs with her. You were on your way back to wherever you lived, you in the car, and according to you, you had a change of heart. Yes. Uh, yes, Your Honor. And you called her, and you said to her, we're coming back. Yes. How long did that process take you? It was within the two hours we had left. So within two hours, you called her and said, I changed my mind. Yes. And what did she say to you? She had said that she had given the dog away. One of them? One of them, yeah. OK. She said, I gave the dog away. Did she tell you to whom? Did she tell you what circumstances? Did she tell you? She said that she had given the dog to a lady named Cindy, and she mentioned that she gave this Danny to... You have text messages? Is what you're reading from text messages? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see it. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, so this is a text in the evening, and she says to you, my friend is traveling back to Tennessee now with my friend Cindy. Now, you went back to the house and you picked up one of the dogs. Yes. Courage. And did you give her back the $100? Uh, no, That's I did That's either not. yes or no? No. Why not? We want our dog back. You made a deal. She paid you $100. She gave you one back, despite the fact that you didn't give her any money. Why do you think that this is a deal that you can say, well, I changed my mind? Brianna Slaniker claims her buyer, Charity Hoovener, wrongfully gave away a golden retriever after promising to keep the puppy. Now, you went back to the house and you picked up one of the dogs. Yes. Courage. And did you give her back the $100? Uh, no, That's I did That's either not. yes or no? No. Why not? Because she kept the other dog, uh, Danny, which was a purebred golden retriever. The condition was to have both dogs together. Okay, to show bond. me where that is. Show me something in writing where that was a condition. It certainly wasn't in your ad. It certainly wasn't in your ad, which just said you needed to find new homes for both your dogs. It, it was a... Did you ever say anything to the defendant about getting a better offer for the Golden Retriever? No. Yes. Did you ever say... Did you ever say anything to the defendant, either on the phone or in a text, that you believed that you could get more for the Golden Retriever because if you had paid $500 for it as a puppy, this was just a couple of months later, it was still a puppy. I'm asking you, did you say anything to her about being able to get more money for her? Mm -hmm. No, no I, no, I did not. We want our dog back because of our other dog, Courage. And I, he, well, she... what makes you think you can have the dog back? You made a deal. She paid you $100. You took the $100. You didn't return the $100 to her. One of the dogs was already rehomed to a, yet another person. She gave you the dog back. She gave you one back, despite the fact that you didn't give her any money. Why do you think that this is a deal that you can say, well, I changed my mind? What makes you... Because it was in a verbal condition to keep the dogs together. She... Absolutely had... not. Shh. Sorry. It was a verbal condition to keep the dogs together. They were a bonded pair, and um, she said that if we wanted to, we could... In what month did you sell the dogs to the defendant? It was December 4th, 2022. 12-4. Now, you got, according to you, the Golden Retriever in October of 2022. So you had, at most, the dogs together for two months. Yes. Yes. Well, that's not a bonding experience. How old was the Golden Retriever? She was uh, two months old when we got her. So she was four months old? Yes. Well, you certainly could have gotten more than $100 for you. She must have been really desperate for that 100 bucks. I really just want my dogs together. Well, they're not together. Then you should have thought of that before you put ads here. You changed your mind. That's it. You changed for whatever reason. You felt sad in the car going home. Or she's going to tell me that you had a conversation with her that involved money. No. I'm ready. Hi, All I want to know from you at this point is, and it's really not dispositive of this case, but it was in your answer. Did you ever have a conversation after she dropped the dogs off about money? Yes. Tell me about the conversation. When was it? Was it in the car? Or it was, was it by my door, by my side door. When? At what point in this? When they came back? Or when, when they came back. She said, I got offered a lot more money for this dog. I think you're a scam artist, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I want what's due. I, I, I want the rest of my money. What the rest of your money? No. I don't know. No, you yeah, I know. Never said that. Yes. She, she got certainly, offered more money, she Your certainly, Honor. She certainly could have gotten more she for this Golden Retriever. She certainly could have gotten more money yes. for the Golden Retriever than the $100 that you gave her for both dogs. Yes, for both. But she accepted the $100, and she never returned the $100. That's it. Finished. What? Your Honor, you I wanted to you? keep courage, and my friend here, Cindy, took Danny. 
Oh, so she's, you have the other dog? I do, yes. I have the other dog, well, step up. So you were going to Tennessee? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, tell me about the conversation that you had with this Hovener yes. on the date that they dropped the dog off. Okay, um, she had called me and let me know that well, first Rihanna, of all, I believe is her name, was gonna drop the dogs off. When did you have this discussion? That was on the 4th, on December 4th, 2022. 2022. She called me, um, I would be guessing, I don't know, I'm gonna say maybe five in the afternoon, and uh, told me that, I think her name's Brianna, was going to be dropping the dogs off. For $100. For $100, and she asked me, do you have you know, $100? And I said, well, sure. So, so I, you gave her a hundred. I gave her a hundred dollars to give, yes. To Brianna. And um, I was waiting, and she was running just a little late. We was going to Tennessee. We had to get diapers and stuff. So I left a hundred dollars with charity, and I said, just in case she comes while I'm gone, you have the money to give her, and I'll come back when you know we're done shopping to get the dog. Okay. Now, when had you discussed? with her the hundred dollars for both dogs over the phone your honor tell me about the conversation the conversation went we had discussed the hundred for both courage and do you Amy. have that in texts yes i'd like to see it not all of them just not all of that just the one that she's asking about. yeah how is the dog she's doing really good yeah i got her to the vet she's and she's growing. Oh, she, uh, two weeks ago was her last shots, and she's already 41 pounds. She's just growing, growing like a weed, yes, yes. Okay, I'm gonna read this to you. I am trying hard to come up with 100 more dollars, dear. I have 100, and you respond to her, okay, we're just gonna have to feed them bread until somebody buys them. Then she answers you, I will come up with the rest. You were just feeding these puppies bread? What's changed in your life financially <laughs> that you think that you should be able to stretch your budget to feed, so far, a 40-pound dog and the other one? What's changed? Nothing. Brianna Slaniker is accusing her buyer Charity Hoovener of giving away a golden retriever hours after purchasing the puppy. Now, you respond to her, okay, we're just going to have to feed them bread until somebody buys them. You were just feeding these puppies bread? That's what you wrote here. Who wrote this, you or him? I wrote it. And I would assume that your life circumstance hasn't changed. You're still not working, and he's still working for $16 an hour. Sure, yeah. Right? Yes. And at that point... Back in December, what you said was, I can only afford, in effect, I can only afford to feed them bread until, I, until somebody buys them. What's changed in your life? What's changed in your life financially that you think that, <coughs> that you think that you should be able to stretch your budget to feed, so far, a 40-pound dog and the other one? What's changed? Nothing. Ridiculous people. First job was it? Kenyon was jobless at the time, Your Honor. Uh, what? Yes. He was jobless in December? Yes. You still took your tax returns and bought a dog for $500. Duh. She says to you, oh, they are both really fantastic dogs. And you respond, absolutely they are. It was a nice chapter to have them. Now their fate is with you or wherever their life journey takes them. Glad you have them now. That's what you wrote. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you're right. I'm probably going to fall madly in love. Anyway, then you changed your mind, and they reached out to Paws Organization and had a chat about last night. Your suspected buyer is being rude to us, and we want our dog back. What's a Paws Organization? What is that? When we had met her at her house, I was a little uneasy about giving her the dog and taking in consideration the area we live in in Metro Detroit. It's, there's a lot of dog fighting there, so I had to be sure that she was trustworthy, so she had mentioned to me that she was uh, 
is a part of the PAWS organization, which is a animal friendly organization like uh Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. You say now you want the dog back and you say option A, you pay us our asking price for the dog. What was your asking price? This is after you already got the hundred bucks. Okay. So now after you got the hundred bucks, left the dogs with her, what was your asking price? What was your asking price? Uh, the, the value of her. What was the asking price? Um, you, it's your words. I'm a little confused, Opt I'm sorry. Option A, you give us, you pay us our asking price for Danny. Or option B, we call our lawyers and take you to court. Yes, I, I at the time wanted her to repay, pay the meaning balance of Danny, how much we had bought her for, $500. So you wanted more money for the dog? Yes. Okay, well, you can't have it. You've already made your bargain. Your case is dismissed. We're done here. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I think that there's a lot of evidence, a lot of things that was left out and unsaid. I thought the judge's decision was fantastic. I just feel like everything wasn't said properly. That's probably on our part. I don't think it was necessarily fair, but that's what that's her decision. Cindy and I wanted the best interest in these dogs. It just didn't feel right, so immediately we went back to get the dogs and keep them and bring them home. It was about money. Just stick it out next time. You know, don't trust everybody. I just feel as if these dogs were not taken care of. I hope she does have a good home. You know the sadness of that whole case to me, Sarah, is the mindlessness of these two young people. I don't know where they got the $500 during that two-year period, an extra $500 to pay for each dog. Mm -hmm. I can only speculate. When I speculate, I say to myself, based upon my common sense, neither one of them look like they're robbing a store. <laughs> no. So I have to say to myself, you know who bought them those dogs? The president. <laughs> Because the only time you get that kind of chunk of money was it your stimulus or extended something. But even if it's extended unemployment, because he was unemployed, you have $1,500 a month in rent, you have a car, you have insurance, you have a two-year-old baby. What kind of thought process goes into buying two expensive dogs? And what big a dog, dogs. A big dog. Well, one of them was a yeah. big dog. One of them was a substantial-sized dog. Then you have a two-year-old baby, and you're going to feed the dog's bread. So what do you do? You have another baby. That makes sense. Makes perfect sense. And I guess I get so excited about it because based upon my history, it's the, always the children that end up suffering. I knew you for, were going there. <laughs> and, it's so, and it's true. Yeah. You're feeding a dog bread and think that that's an appropriate way to take care of an animal and trying to get it off your plate. The first thing I would be doing is making sure I didn't sign up for another child financially responsibility Yeah, well, wise. what are you going to do, cut the baby's formula with water so that you can stretch it? I mean, they both look like they could use a good meal. I don't understand. I just don't understand the thought process. And it's always the innocents that suffer yeah. because the, even the dogs are innocents. Yeah. Clearly, the babies, but clearly the dogs are innocents. You know, they just want to be fed yeah. and have a home with, you're not a four-month-old puppy eating bread until they can find somebody that can give them something more nourishing. It's absolutely outrageous and irresponsible and tragic. That's what I think. Life isn't getting any different from what it was 40 years ago. It just stays the same. Yeah. Well, just... at least the Golden Retriever is in a good home, goes to the vet, hopefully is getting fed real <laughs> dog food, so there's a, a bright yeah. side or a silver right. lining in, yeah. in the end of that. So. Right. Now, if you could just find reasonable parents to take care of these two children. His brother, Randall Rubin, for unpaid expenses from their mother's funeral. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Good morning, Judge. Case oh number 2011, Rubin versus Rubin. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Rubin, this is your brother. Yes, it is, Your Honor. And this case involves sharing expenses for your mother's funeral. Correct. And it is your claim that your brother, who I believe was living with your mother at the time she died, right. agreed to pay half of the funeral expenses when he received proceeds from a small life insurance policy that your mother had left. Yes, Judge. Our mother only left us a $5,000 life insurance policy. That's what the case is about. Right. 
your brother's position is it's not his responsibility. He made no such promise. Of course, you do understand that without that promise to pay for your mother's funeral expenses, children aren't normally responsible for the expenses of their parent. Do you understand that? Yes, Judge. Mr. Rubin, when did your mother pass away? She passed away August 20th of 2021. How old was she? She was 86. And how long had you been living with your mother? Uh, your Honor, I took care of my mother since 1991. Well, if you were taking care of her for almost 30 years, sir, what kind of physical malady did she have when she was in her 50s? She suffered from chronic uh, kidney failure. When did that medical condition develop? Pretty close to 91. What is pretty close to 91? Beginning in the 90s, 91, 92, etc. So when you moved in with her, was your mother sick or was she not sick? She was sick. Did you live with your mother because it was not only good for your mother, but because it was good for you? That's Correct. what I'm trying to get yes. to. Yes. The answer was yes. Yes, And you moved into your mother's house. Correct. That she owned or rented? She was uh, purchasing it through a mortgage. She owned her home? Yes, ma'am. Was she working in the 90s? She was. Therefore, she wasn't incapacitated to the extent that she needed full-time care. At the beginning, no, ma'am. When you moved in with her, she was employed on a full-time basis... Correct. ...sufficient enough to get a mortgage from a bank based upon her income. Correct. And what were you doing in 1991? I worked. For whom? Associates. For how long? Off and on from 91 till about two years ago. What does off and on mean? I had several jobs in between. I sold cars for various car dealerships, and I also owned several businesses. When you lived with your mother, who paid the mortgage? My mother did. Did you pay your mother for any expenses? Rent, gas, electric, phone, anything? Uh, or did you live there and you had an agreement? You lived there, she wanted your company, whatever it was. She lived alone? At the time, yes. In 1991, she was just living alone? Correct. And I assume, therefore, happy to have your company. Correct. I assume. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you made no payments to your mother? With the occasional help with some utilities or food, yes. Okay. So you were able, I assume, to save a substantial amount of money. Correct. Just for my own information, so that I can sort of put this thing together. Sure. You have stocks, bonds, savings? No, ma'am. What do you have? You were able to save a lot of money. How did you invest it? I invested in several businesses, which one is my liquidation company... What happened with your mother's house? When she passed, I was still residing at the house. I paid the mortgage by myself for the months of September 2021 as well as October 2021. And I remained there until, I want to say, February 2022. My sister is the executor of the estate, and she uh, sold it just recently for 465000 Okay, so... What I'm gathering from you, you paid the mortgage, you say, in September and October, then you stopped paying the mortgage November, December, January, and February. That is correct, ma'am. But you lived in the house. I did. Rent-free, because you paid nothing. Correct. Where are you living now? I live in Nogales, Mexico. And you live in a house, you live in a... In an apartment, ma'am. You pay rent? I do. Anybody live with you? No, ma'am. What's your rent? $250. And what was the mortgage payment in your mother's house? I paid $1,750 even. Are you the sister? Yes, Your Honor. Could you stand up for a second? I'm just getting some information. Tell me your name. Shannon Hayes. Ms. Hayes, house was sold recently for four sixty five. dollars And what was left on the mortgage? $258,000 plus a $35,000 uh, third mortgage. Your Honor, since her Ro- since Ro- brother was <laughs> not paying, <laughs> since he wasn't paying, the house actually went into foreclosure. Just and so we had to get... Just a second. I didn't ask you anything. Okay. I'm just... Sarah Rose, four sixty five less two fifty eight. dollars $207,000, Your Honor. Less 35. 172. Okay, and there are three siblings? And also, Your Honor, there was a $10,000 lien on the property that had to be paid. So we're down to 162. Mm-hmm. Correct. So it's 162 clear, so a little over $50,000 a person. She owed the IRS, Your Honor, for back payments in excess of $54,000. She hadn't paid taxes in years. Did you pay the IRS? I just did. And how much did you pay the IRS? 54000 $188. Sarah, from 162, take out 54000 
$108,000. Anything else? Yes, Your Honor. She had uh, Arizona state taxes, $3,000 I paid as well. 105. Is that 105 net? So we also have the medical bills that I had to take care of. She had no insurance and she had to have Medicare. She did, Your Honor. That's her co payment. Okay. And what was her co payment? $3,000 in medical. Let's do a simple $100,000. Mm -hmm. How much were the funeral expenses? $2,000. $434.73. Was the total funeral expense? Yes. Well, that's what you're claiming he owes you. That's his share of the... I want to know what the entire funeral costs, sir. You'll show me the invoice. Sure. I, I do have all the invoices for you. The first one, Your Honor, is just for the cremation... 1058. Correct. Okay. 1058. The next one should be from the cemetery. This is the total funeral home charges, and this is cremated remains internment of $2,200. Correct. The next invoice you should have, Your Honor, is from uh, services provided by a rabbi. Okay, that was $600. Your Honor, it was actually $700. I paid the rabbi $100 as an honorarium. No, that's $600. Whatever you want to pay him as an honorarium, that's fine. So the total expenses are $3,858. Um, you should have another invoice for a uh, proposal for a headstone as well. 1717. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. 3858 plus $1,717. $5,575. That's it. Okay. I assume your mother died without a will. Correct, Your Honor. Okay. And you are the only surviving siblings? Yes, Your Honor. The estate will be divided into three parts. Correct. So each one of you will get about $33,000 from the estate after all of the expenses have been paid. There's also the real estate commission fees that we didn't mention to subtract from the net income. And what were the real estate commission fees? $30,000. Oh, that, yeah, that's a substantial amount. Yes, Your Honor. So 108 less 30, $78,000. So now you're down to $25,000 each. That's correct, Your Honor. What I'm trying to figure out is, even giving you all those expenses that you paid, your mother's estate, absent this $5,000 life insurance policy that there was, correct? And you got a share of that life insurance policy. How much... Don't... Yes, the answer yes, is yes. How much did you receive? 2500 even. Okay, 2500 Yes, ma'am. And did you get a share of that life insurance policy? Yeah, Your Honor. Did you? Yes, Your Honor. I also received $2,500. Great. And the estate had net, 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 after everything, at least $75,000 divided by three, which is $25,000 apiece after you pay all expenses, mm -hmm. which in this case would have been funeral expenses. Do you understand where I'm coming from, sir? I do. I have children and grandchildren. 10 years is a long time. That's a grandchild. She didn't see me at least once a month. She better keep her fingers crossed that I don't change my will. <laughs>
taxes, which you paid out of the estate. Yes, Your Honor. You paid out of the estate after you sold the house broker's fees. Mm -hmm. State tax fees, along with those kinds of fees, would be funeral expenses. Now, if the two of you agreed, or the two brothers agreed, which is what you're saying, that yes. he agreed to pay half, not a third, but he agreed to pay half of the funeral expenses for which you are not being reimbursed by the estate. Do you understand? Correct. I have not received anything from the estate, Your Honor. Okay. Well, this would be you. I'll let you know tomorrow. I think it's $2,200 for Menorah Gardens, and cremation was ten fifty three, so it's $1,626 each. That would be you, right? Yes. Okay. 1626 Because you asked him how much you owed, right? I did. So I assume since you asked him how much you owed, you had some sort of an arrangement with him to pay a third, because it does say a third, of the funeral expenses. That is correct. Okay, great. I do want to interject, Your Honor, and let you know that when I did receive my monies, the $2,500 from her life insurance, we had communicated with one another that I had some emergency dental work that needed to be done. It was life threatening. And therefore, he said, I don't have the email because I had to block him. I have a restraining order against him. So I lost all my emails between us. I listen. However, I ha I, nobody ever has their emails here I have or a video. A very substantial amount of those monies went for my dental. I don't care. How old are you? 59, ma'am. You have lived rent-free for 30 years. And according to you, you had businesses. You worked most of that time, either selling cars or on and off for a company for 30 years. You made an agreement with your brother to pay one-third of your mother's funeral expenses. And as far as I'm concerned, if you had dental problems, pay for it from the resources of one of your businesses because you had no expenses. You have very little sympathy for you. You lived in the house for months without paying the mortgage. That's outrageous. That's taking money away from them. Do you understand that? Yes, I say you lived in the house for three months rent-free, at mm. least three months rent-free. So if you paid mortgage payments for two months, I would say to you, sounds pretty <laughs> reasonable to me. You know, there's a story that's created. Correct. And what's created here is there's unequivocal information in these text messages mm -hmm. that you and your brother and sister, because... You, sir, are claiming that he owes half. He doesn't owe half. That was never the agreement, according to what you gave me. According to what you gave me, and in your own hand, you say, this is what you owe me, $1,600, not $2,600. Well, Your Honor, if I can explain, the reason why I said half is only me and my brother were included in life insurance policy. My I sister don't... was not named on it, to... and it was only for $5,000, so... Sir, listen carefully so, to me. I mean, if we listen put our money together, we could have paid for it. Listen carefully to me. That has nothing to do with you. Exactly. The, the, the same with his proceeds of your mother's final resting should have come out of the estate. That way, it would have been born equally between the three people who will profit from the estate. You understand? I understand, Your Honor. Very but... good. So, if you understand that, the math is simple. If he pays a third, you get your sister to kick in whatever she's getting back from the $25,000, and everybody is equal. Well, Your Honor, I, I mean, you're already getting the vibe that this guy is the biggest bum. He lived just a off second. his mother, just a second. off of his just, mother. Let me explain something to you. That is unnecessary here. Unnecessary and really quite stupid. Stupid. You handed me evidence, sir, that you made an agreement with him. He asked you what he owed. You told him. Yes. $1,600. That's what you told him, right. that he owes you, $1,600. That's correct. And each of you are getting a certain amount of money for nothing from your mother. I'm going to ask you some questions. Prior to her death, when was the last time you saw her? When was the last time you saw your mother? Month and year? I honestly do not recall, Your Honor, because Okay, just a home... second. Was it in the decade that she died? Yes. Okay, well, she died in 2021. So when did you see her? Probably several years before that, Your Honor. Well, I so have you to... didn't I... see her in the decade before? Your Honor, you have to understand, her house was infested with bed bugs. Pay careful attention to me. I asked you some questions. Yes. My question was, when was the last time you saw your mother? So you hadn't seen your mother in a decade. When was the last time you saw your mother? I saw my mother frequently, Your Honor. It was May, Mother's Day. 
Okay, Mother's Day of 2021. And Your Honor, I did. Shh, I'm not speaking to you. March of 2021. Prior to that, when did you see your mother? November 2021. Wait a minute. How Just, could you hey. see her in November 2021 if she passed in August of 2021? In November 2020. Okay, May 2021, November of 2020. Prior to that, when did you see your mother? I saw her frequently because. No, she... no, not frequently. Month and year. I don't have the. Did you see her every month? No, Your Honor. Did you see her every two months? About that, yes, Your Honor. Okay, well, between May and November, that's more than two months. Mm -hmm. That's when you can remember. Yes, Your Honor. So it would be fair to say that whether he took great care of her and whether the house was clean or dirty or anything else, your 86-year-old mother lived with your brother, whether you like him or not, and you were totally disinterested in her. You're the one who started this, sir. I was about ready to finish this case, but when you say he's a bum, I say, you know what? This guy's got to be put in his place. He may have been, but he was the bum who took care of your mother. You started it. Sean Rubin is accusing his brother, Randall Rubin, of not paying his share of funeral expenses. Randall claims Sean spread multiple lies about him. So it would be fair to say that whether he took great care of her and whether the house was clean or dirty or anything else, your 86-year-old mother lived with your brother, whether you like him or not, and you were totally disinterested in her. Well, that's not true, Your Honor. Well, I want to know when, if you didn't see your mother in a decade, in a decade, and she had failing health, I would say, as a child, you were totally disinterested in her. I did visit my mother after she had kidney replacement or kidney surgery. I visited her after her surgery. We both did. I just a second. Do you understand where I'm coming from, sir? I do. I have children and grandchildren, right? Sure. Ten years is a long time. That's a grandchild. If she didn't see me at least once a month, she better keep her fingers crossed that I don't change my will. Well, Your Honor, I'm sure that Sarah is very close to you where we live out of state. Just a second. We both have you actual real jobs. Just a second. If her father didn't visit me at least once a month and we live in different states, he too would check the will. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. So what I'm telling you is, if you don't see your mother for 10 years, you are a disinterested child. You're the one who started this, sir. I was about ready to finish this case, but when you say he's a bum, I say, you know what? This guy's got to be put in his place. He may have been, but he was the bum who took care of your mother. No, no. Oh, absolutely not. Oh, really? Did your mother have full-time nursing care for no. the last 10 years? I mean, the answer is either yes no. or no. It's an absolute she no. She declined. That's not what I asked you. Not what she declined. Did she have full-time nursing care? That's a yes or a no. Yeah, no. Your Honor. Okay, so if she didn't have full-time nursing care and she was in poor health because, based upon your blurted out answer to me, you thought she should have full-time care. Yes, Your Honor. Right, but she didn't. So he took care of her. You don't like the way he took care of her. That's your prerogative, but you let him take care of her. And you went about your business in your own states where you live, and he took care of her. And you didn't like him, and he may have been a sponge and a bum. You started it. But you were not interested enough in your mother to move next door to her or to have her move next door to you when she got sick. Your Honor. Somebody else I actually took... did ask her to move in with me, and she declined. Right. She didn't want to live with you. There had to be a reason for that there if is. she was being abused. Do you Your understand? Honor, there is. Unless, do I look like I need help from you? No, of course not. Then I want you to be quiet. Yes, ma'am. You owe him $1,600. That's it. Not 26 what he's asking you. Put it down. I have a counterclaim. $1,600. And I'll hear your counterclaim. Thank you. Which Your sounds Honor. a little ridiculous to me. I'm finished with you. $1,600. That's what you owe, except for the counterclaim, which I'll hear. Well, the counterclaim is that they posted something on the internet that says that there were bugs in the shoes you were selling. If that's... Uh, just a second. Quiet. Your counterclaim says that he defamed you and your business because he wrote on the internet that there were bugs in the shoes you were selling. I couldn't make that up. Let me see. Maybe I did <laughs> make it correct. up. You're correct. Yeah, exactly he posted he that there were bugs in the shoes I was selling. <laughs> he also uh, put that I impregnate Hispanic women. Oh, just a second. First of all, that's not in here. 
It's right Folks, here, ma'am. It's not in my answer. So I want to see where he wrote. And who knows what you're doing in Mexico? I have no idea what you're doing in Mexico. Show me what he wrote about the bugs in the shoes that you're selling. Giving me a whole lot of nonsense there that I'm not going to read. It, it, it's not. You these give are, me. These are these are the posts that he put online. I these only also, want to. These are also letters from my mother in her own. I'm not reading the letters from your mother. Okay. I'm reading a post or more where he says there are bugs in the shoes you are selling. Yes. Period. Do you want to hear the audio that he sent to one of my employers? No. I want to see where he wrote there are bugs in the shoes you are selling, which is what's in my answer. Right here, ma'am. May I have it, please? And I do have a restraining order on him as well. I'm not interested in your okay. restraining order. Okay, so this has nothing to do with anything. I'm going to give this back to you, and if you don't hand me exactly what I asked for, I'm it's dismissing. The, I'm not the... reading all that drivel. I asked you for one post. Your Honor, if you'd like to see I don't something. want to hear you. This is what I wrote. I if you don't want, to see it. want. This is not your case to prove, sir. Okay, I'm just trying to be honest. Here you go, Your Honor. This is one that he Thank you. wrote don't to Don't tell my me employer. one. Just give me the posts about shoes. This has nothing to do it, it, with shoes. Too. This one is in well, Spanish. If you show me one more thing that doesn't say bugs and shoes, yeah, I'm just dismissing your case. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Please look at this one. It is in Spanish. Well, no, that's your problem. The counterclaims dismissed. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,600. We're finished here. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Your Honor. This court is adjourned. I'm very pleased with the judge's decision. I think she made the right decision. I wasn't really thrilled. I'm just kind of glad it's over. I never want to see my brother again. We're a very estranged bunch of people. We do not like each other. She didn't raise him right. She raised us right, and we're going to do the right thing on behalf of our mom. First and foremost, I will visit you every month, every <laughs> week, every day, if that's what it takes. <laughs> but in all seriousness, this case shows how foolish it is not to memorialize your wishes for the end because it creates a heightened sense of stress at a time when emotions are already running high. And first rule of wills, trust, and estates class is always have a will. So it doesn't matter how much you have, how little you have. It's important, your wishes, and, and to prevent situations like this, your loved ones having to go through. Yeah, and be angry with each other. I mean, they don't love each other anyway, <laughs> but to be angry with each other, if you can avoid that. Even young people, Sarah, who have put anything together. Yeah. You have a will? I do. There you go. I wouldn't want my loved ones going through that. So, yeah, you have to take the time and write it down. And, and yeah, that's really all you can do to avoid the situation. Honor Tara Gordon is suing her former clients, Beatrice Jackson and Nicholas Smith, for the balance of a wedding contract. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case number 2030, Gordon versus Jackson Smith. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Gordon, you're a wedding planner. Yes. You called her to plan a wedding that you were having in Las Vegas. Yes. It's your husband? Yes. The wedding was scheduled for what date? April 30th of 22. Your lawsuit against the defendants is for the balance of a fee that you say is due and owing to you. Ms. Jackson and Mr. Smith are counterclaiming for a whole bunch of things. They said that not only didn't they get everything that they paid for, that you selected the venue and they were ejected from the venue because they weren't allowed to have a wedding there or serve liquor. So what was your fee that you quoted the defendants and how much of that fee did they pay? My fee for planning the wedding was $4,000. And that $4,000, was that fee reduced to a contract? Yes, it was. I'd like to see it. Okay. Ms. Jackson, this is your first wedding? Yes. And yours? Yes. Okay, your total fee was 4000 and a deposit of 2000 Did they give you a deposit? Yes. Okay, so they signed an agreement to pay you $4,000. How much did they pay you in total? In total, for our planning fee, they paid... No, in total, how much did they pay your company? $2,000. 2000 Correct. So how our company is set up is we're set up as an affordable payment plan for a wedding. So we set up our clients on a payment plan. So they also pay the expenses of all of their wedding through us. So you have to send them an invoice for what it was that you spent for the vendors. Correct. Okay. And then and also the default of that contract states that if they miss payments, they have breached the contract. That's why we're here. 
Each of you is accusing the other of breaching this agreement. You say that they didn't finish paying you what they owed you, and they say you didn't furnish the services to them that they signed up for for the wedding. They gave you $2,000, and the wedding was supposed to be held where? The banquet hall. Did you send them a deposit? No, because at that time, she had not paid enough money. Just a second. The answer is no. You had not sent them a deposit. No. Had they sent you the deposit of $2,000? They sent me the deposit for our planning fee, yes. I'm talking about for your planning fee, $2,000. Yes. yes. And how much was the deposit for... 50% of $16,000, which was $8,000. And where is the invoice for that that you sent them? I don't have that invoice because she was not able to secure the venue. I read it. And from what I read in your complaint, the original venue that you secured, according to you, was rendered unavailable because of a broken pipe. That was the second venue. We went through three venues. The first venue, she lost that venue because she could not keep up with the payments and did not submit money for a deposit. The second venue was the R&R Event Center. That venue she lost because a pipe broke in the venue. Okay, just just a second. R&R... Event Center. And when was that taken? That was booked on March 11, 2022. And I do have the invoice for that. And how much was it? $2,250. Okay, that's much better than 8000 Okay. Did she put in a deposit? The po- deposit was made from the monthly payments that she makes towards her wedding. Show me invoices that you sent her every month. Yes, that you- I have that. Well, I'd like to see them. This is the statement of the account. It lists all the invoices that she was sent on a monthly basis. So she paid you the $20,000 that was invoiced. Her wedding cost a total of $23,000. No, no, that's not what I said. Opening balance was zero. Invoice $20,451.57. Paid $19,356.57. That's what this says. Uncross your arms. Correct. No, that's... Okay, so she paid for everything. Now... No, she didn't pay for everything because, as I just stated, her wedding cost a total of $23,651. No. Let's go back to, because I see that we're not getting anywhere. Before her wedding, before anything happened, before she said, I do, and before he says, I take you, she paid practically $20,000, which was your original estimate and her budget for the wedding. There's a second. That's either a yes or a no. Before the wedding, your original budget that you were given by the defendant, I read the papers, was $20,000. So, and as I... mm -hmm. That's either a yes, I read the papers, or a no. Yes, that is the budget she stated she would like to stay around. But, however, in planning a wedding, you cannot give an exact of how it's going to I didn't say that. I didn't... Madam, pay careful attention to me. I've made 16 weddings... I've had 16 event planners. I know exactly how it works, and I know exactly that you can't always predict to the $100 or $50 or sometimes $500 how much more the wedding is going to cost. It never costs less. That's not what I said to you. I said by the time the wedding took place, she had paid the vast majority of the original amount that she said she wanted to spend for the wedding. And that is accurate. She said she wanted to spend $20,000. She gave you over $19,000. Did that include your fee? No, it didn't. Just a second. So the answer is no. That's what she wanted to spend exclusive of your fee. Correct. Now, of your fee, she gave you an initial deposit, or they did, of $2,000. So... That's either a yes or a no. She gave you $2,000. Did she ever pay you the other $2,000 for the fee? And the rest of the expenses that you want are the additional expenses over and above the $20,000 that... Stop shaking your head. Over and above what she originally said she wanted to spend. Correct. Now, I'm going to get to what happened just about a week before the wedding. Okay. You had booked a place. She had paid for the place, $2,250. Yes. And that was at R&R. According to you, something happened at R&R. Stop shaking your head. It's annoying. Something happened at R&R. What happened at R&R and when? Correct. The wedding was scheduled to happen on April 30th. I Just was in... tell me what 
happened at r and &R. I was informed by Rico, the owner, sitting on that side, that a pipe had busted and the venue would no longer be available for usage on her wedding date. And on what date was that? It was around the week before her wedding, or two weeks before her wedding, sorry. Date? I don't have the exact date. You own, manage, or what, this r and &R? I'm the owner of r and &R Events Center. Hey, tell me your last name, sir. Cox, C-O-X. Do you remember having a conversation with the plaintiff about the venue? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember when it was? March 25th of 2022. Can you tell me what you said to her and what she said to you? We had a conversation. I'm like, hey, problem with my venue. I had a pipe that busted. I won't be able to host her wedding. Well, the reception, I should say. So I informed her. I can put her in contact with other venues that I may know, or I could send her back the deposit. She asked for the deposit back. I sent the deposit back probably within the hour. How much was the deposit? $2,250? No, ma'am. It was, was $1,125, which was half. So 50%? Yes, ma'am. So you sent her back the deposit? Yes, ma'am. You received the deposit, Ms. Gordon? Yes, I did. The wedding wasn't until April 30th. So Correct. you had plenty of time. Well, not plenty of time. You had time to look for a new venue or else which they would have to change the date. Correct, and they found Just it. Just what venue, you can sit down, Mr. Cox, thank you very much. What venue did you select? And had you ever used them before? No, I had not. I never worked with a challenge budget like this for a venue. I, I, if you don't like the budget, don't take the gig. Yeah, yeah cool. I won't. And that's where the reception was held. But that venue was not allowed to have this kind of party. I was I, not aware of that until the day of the wedding. That's your problem. Mm -hmm. That's not their problem. They hired you as an event planner. They did. They and just they got a wedding. They... The wedding went the entire time. The wedding was not closed until after the wedding had already ended. So they used the venue regardless. Okay. Miss Gordon, mm -hmm. it's your job as the event planner, which is what I don't understand you being here. Mm -hmm. It's your job as the event planner. They don't live in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. That's your job to ensure that the place that you select is a venue that's capable of performing the duties that you outlined in your contract, which means they serve food, they're allowed to serve liquor, they're allowed to dance, they're allowed to host an event of how many people? It was supposed to be 120, but all of my guests didn't get their invitation. So. Okay, so over so 100 actually, people. Your Honor, it wasn't that they were not allowed to have the wedding there. They were allowed to have the wedding there. What they were not allowed to do was the business was not allowed to operate after a certain time, and that is what the business owner produced to us. Just a second. You want to show me a contract that she signed with that yes. business owner? Ms. Gordon. Yes, I do. Yeah, I would like to see the contract that you signed with this business owner. Sarah, just for my own information, would you look up this venue, yeah. please? Tell me what you find. Sure. Ms. Gordon, this space was a little less money than the previous space that you had selected. Correct. $500? $700? Yes, and that's because they were not providing all of the things that the original event pl place was providing. Was this event space that you booked at the end of the evening, I don't want to use the word rated, closed by the police? That's either a yes. Did the police arrive at this venue? Yes, they did. Okay. And what time did the police arrive at the venue? They arrived at 9.30. Is there a police report that anyone has? No. And how many parties have you done where police arrived at the end of an evening or during the course of an evening in the two years that you've been in Las Vegas? Never. And the police arrived at this wedding not because anybody was creating a disturbance, they weren't shots fired. Well, That's... no, that is, that is why. You may say, sir, I don't know anything about the venue, but that's your job. You're supposed to know about the venue. When I told her in the first place that she needed to postpone her wedding, that was my professional you mean that, advice. You, no, no, that's not what she hired you for, to tell you to postpone her wedding. Wedding planner, Tara Gordon, claims her former clients, Beatrice Jackson and Nicholas Smith, owe for the balance of their wedding. Beatrice and Nicholas are countersuing for breach of contract. Okay, police arrived at this wedding not because anybody was creating a disturbance, they weren't shots fired, 
Well, That's... no, that is that is why they initially had a report because well, I don't know that. If you could show it to me, I don't have. I'd be more than her. happy to look at it. The police showed up. May I bring my witness up, please? For what reason? Because she can attest to the altercation that took place prior, which is why we were even brought up on the radar, because the other businesses in the vicinity of where the business takes place had complained. There was a lot of altercation back and forth outside of the event, because she refused to sign the agreed-upon payment plan to continue payments after the wedding. You understand that I'm not particularly sympathetic I'm not I'm, less, I'm letting you know I'm not particularly sympathetic for the following reason. Mm -hmm. Somebody plans a wedding and has a budget of $20,000 plus your fee, so that's, say, $25,000 that they either put together or are saving up for a wedding, first for each. A week before the wedding, something happens with the venue where the wedding could not be held at the venue of their choice. They're relying on an out-of-state wedding planner. That's you to find a legitimate venue that is licensed to have an event. When they get to Las Vegas on, on the date of the wedding, you present them with a new contract. No, that is not true. That well, is when did you, you have it incorrect. When, just a second. When did you give them, because you said that the problem which caused the police to come... Too. Just a second. She, I don't understand. Before I selected the very last venue, she was on FaceTime with me, looking at the venue with me, because I informed her I've never worked with this venue. I don't know anything about the venue. I told her that the best thing for her is to postpone her wedding. She was already behind in payments. This is her third venue. Just a second. She paid you almost the entire $20,000. She paid it in March. Shh. In March. Doesn't matter. She paid you almost the entire... No, 30 days thing. before her Just wedding. That's the whole thing. Not but it, I'm not looking at you. <sighs> Before her wedding, she paid you almost the entire amount of the $20,000 that she originally gave you as a budget before the wedding. If you look at the contract, it says that you're going to make monthly payments so that we can adequately plan your wedding. You booked me back in 2021, almost a year before your wedding. The wedding was to be planned over the course of that year. The initial venue that I have worked with, that I know is reputable, she ended up not paying the deposit on time, so they had to move forward with another date. After that, I didn't get any payments from her until March when she got her tax return. And then at that time, I was forced with less than 60 days to try to find another venue, in which I did, which was our, put, our event, e event space. And then a pipe busted in that event space. And then I was forced to find another venue for her. I told her back in January, the top of the year, you need to postpone your wedding. Before invitations went out, before of all of that, when she was having troubles with her payment plan, I advised her as a professional, I think you should postpone your wedding date. You may talk a lot, but the bottom line is you're the expert. Uncross your arms. You're the well, expert. I'm the expert. You're, I'm, you're, you're, try, you're trying to talk over me? Beginning. You're trying to talk over me? No, I'm not. Good. So you're the expert. She's out of town. The reason that she selects a wedding planner in Las Vegas is because you're supposed to know whether or not the venue that you recommend is able to take care of the party you book. You may say to her, I don't uncross. You may say to her, I don't know anything about the venue, but that's your job. You're supposed to know about the venue. When I told her in the first place that she needed to postpone her wedding, that was my professional you mean that's, advice. You, no, like no, hours. that's not what she hired you for, to tell you to postpone her wedding. She hired you to plan her wedding, not to give her advice yes, whether or not... Uh, you're you're to trying me. to talk over me. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. You have to understand there are certain things that you did. Okay. You got out the invitations. That's a great thing. I assume you got a DJ. That's great. All of those things. The wedding itself, to me, was problematic. If my wedding ended with the police coming to the venue, and it turned out that the venue was one where you weren't allowed to have that kind of an event, I would be annoyed Again, at the they wedding. Were allowed oh, just to a... have a wedding. No, they weren't. The police officer. The contract the clearly rhythm. states that. I don't care what it states. That's not what the police officer said. You, and you uh, know you, because you have a police I don't court. care what it states. No, I don't care what it states. Out. You started to tell me before that the reason the police came there is because there was an altercation about you giving her another contract on that date, and there were words outside, and people were 
complaining other people who no, were in the air. That's not what I said. What did you say? The night before her wedding, I explained to her. I, I, well, I want to know what's happened on the date of the wedding. I'm about to Just tell a second. You. Can you let me finish so I can No, articulate I this? want you to go because I, I have a limited amount of time and I'm getting very old. I thought what you said to me, and you're going to read this back, is that the reason the police were drawn to the venue is because of the arguments outside. Correct. With her. Let's read that That's back. That's what I just, just said. A, that was on the date of the wedding. Correct. You got married? Mm-hmm. And you're happy? And you had of people course, at the so wedding? Of course, got a free wedding. And you... $20,000, <gasps> You You're almost done. <gasps> Do you understand? You're almost finished. Go ahead. We were brought up on the radar because the other businesses in the vicinity where the event took place had complained. There was a lot of altercation back and forth outside of the event because she didn't agree to sign the payment plan. Okay, so the reason that you said, let's go back, that the police came to the venue and then shut it down because it wasn't allowed to be used for what it was used for was because there were altercations about this second contract. No, that's not the contract we were having an altercation about. That's what I'm trying to... Oh, just a second. On the day of the wedding, Miss Gordon, did you present her with a new contract to sign. That's either a yes, yes or a no. Yes, I did, but not for the venue. That's I don't... I'm... That's not for the venue. I didn't say okay. it was for the venue. Yes. On, the, on the day of her wedding, did you present her with a new contract? The answer is yes. yes. You said you had discussed that with her the night before? Correct. And uncross. Oh, sorry. And the night before, did she agree to sign... Yes, she Just did. a second. ...a new contract? Yes, she did. Okay. And the new contract provided for what? The new contract that she was supposed to sign... Provided for what? Provided for the remainder balance of the $23,681 that her wedding actually cost. Because she had only paid $19,000... You have the sheet, so I don't I have the exact number. I have it, Correct. So, since she had only paid that amount and the total expenses for her wedding were $23,681... Okay. So, the and night so before... She agreed so, so to make a payment plan with me to extend her payments beyond her wedding date to pay off this and remaining is that, balance. And is that what she agreed to on the phone? Is that what you're saying to Correct. me? Correct. She agreed with she you agreed on... Shh! We... She agreed on the phone to pay you the additional $3,500 or $4,000, and she agreed to pay it over time. Correct. And that was Friday night. Correct. And then she got to the wedding. Correct. And... At what point did you present her with the new contract? At what point in the event? Upon her arrival to the reception venue. Now, what happened when you got to the reception venue? You'd already gotten through the ceremony, so you're already married. What time did you get to reception? Um, so, the reception was supposed to start at 5. Thanks, so start, it was supposed to start at 5. But when we got there, she wasn't even done decorating. All of my family stayed outside for another hour, including my grandmother, my grandpa. We waited in cars. Shh. Okay. Said, it was supposed to start at 5. At 5. This venue that I have here someplace, you have it? I think it was supposed to start at 5.30 and end at 10.30 for the conference. Okay. Thank you. Was it supposed to start at 5.30? Yes. What happened at 5.30, Ms. Gordon? I presented her with the contract, and then she refused to sign it. Her guests were waiting outside because she was refusing to sign it. When she refused to sign it, because our agreement was she was going to sign the agreement okay. before we started the reception. When she said that she did not want to start the reception, I responded and I said, we will pack all of this up and my staff and I will leave because now we're not being paid for our services. What time did the police arrive? I'm telling you, I would be... Furious if I spent $20,000 for a wedding and my evening ended by the police having my guests leave. Furious. Wedding planner Tara Gordon has accused her former clients, Beatrice Jackson and Nicholas Smith, of refusing to pay the remaining wedding balance. Beatrice and Nicholas claim Tara booked an illegal venue for their reception. So, what time did the police arrive? The police arrived at 9.30. And did the police tell everyone to leave? 
Yes, they did. And told everyone that they had to leave. They arrived and they told me that everyone had to leave. Whether they told you or whether yes. they told them. Yes. They said the place had to be cleared. Correct. And that was an hour before the termination of the event. So at the end, the event was... The event was supposed to end at 10.30. Timeline. Police arrived at 9.30. That's according to you. That's an hour short of the event time she was supposed to have at the venue. No, the event was supposed to end at 9.30. This is her um, timeline of no. events that was supposed to no. take place. No, this is the contract. That's the time that I have the venue, too. I have to clean up. The agreed-upon timeline is here. The wedding was supposed S to end at 9.30, S giving me an hour to clean up. I'll take a look at what you have. I'm just telling you that this is the signed contract. That's it says between me and the venue, because they says, were giving me an extra hour to clean up. That doesn't say that in here. Because I booked it for a timeline. I booked it from 5.30 to 10.30. I outline everything that takes Just place. It ended at the last song of the night was at 9.30. And she went through the last song. We made it through the last song of the night on time. Could I take a look at that? I just can't wait till it's my turn. Well, the last song of the night was supposed to start at 9.30. Yes, and it started earlier because oh. we made it through and she was done dancing. And by the time the police came, it was just mingling and dancing going on. So she had made it through her entire wedding reception is what I'm trying to state. Yes, Mr. Cox. Please, please. Hey, Yard, I'm back. That's not true. The police actually came at nine o'clock and... Were you there? I was the DJ. Day. You were the DJ? Yes, ma'am. Oh. That didn't get paid. Don't speak. Oh, he got Don't paid. He got paid. Speak. So the police arrived at 9 o'clock. That's correct. And what happened when they arrived, Mr. Cox? So By the way, did you know them before the wedding? No, ma'am. Did you know her before the wedding? Just conversation that we had via Facebook or telephone. No, he did not Which know I, me I, so no. prior Just, to I'm not spe I'm not <laughs> talking to you. I'm talking to him. She booked your services. Yes, ma'am. And how much were your services for the night? My DJing services were 500 Were you paid? No, ma'am. What happened when the police arrived? The police came, asked everyone to leave. Do you know anything about this venue space where the wedding took place? Yes, ma'am. Tell me about it. It's a storefront. So are a lot of venues in Las Vegas. Your case is dismissed. Do you understand? This is not a free-for-all. As far as I'm concerned, you got almost exactly what her budget called for. And I have one vendor that wasn't paid. Because she didn't pay. It's clear. Well, how do I know that you paid the other vendors? At least I know one vendor that you didn't pay. And she it's paid right almost $20,000. They got paid because... She... <laughs> okay. I have two things. I have one vendor that's here that wasn't paid. You were paid almost $20,000. The balance, part of it, is for your fee. Part of it that is my for... fee was not... Are you saying that part of this money that you're suing for, this $4,000, was not part of your fee? The $4,000 that I'm suing for is part of my fee. Of course, that's what I said. So part of that money was for your fee, and part of it was for vendors. I have one vendor here who says he wasn't paid. Well, I have receipts from other vendors, if you like to see. No, I just... I know you had a lot of vendors, but you didn't pay him. He's the only I didn't pay him body. because she didn't pay me. <laughs> it's clear. <laughs> you didn't pay me enough money ahead, to pay her venue. I just saw... I have here proof of how much every item in her wedding cost, which exceeded the $19,000 that she paid. Clearly, she owes more money. It's... That's the facts of the matter. She owes more money to She's her wedding She's counter-suing you for ruining her wedding because you booked it at a venue that wasn't allowed to have a wedding. She's right. got a counterclaim for far more than your claim. Bottom line is, she picked a wedding planner, she picked a venue, she tacitly approved this change of venue, both of you had, had to at the last minute, but you did that relying on the wedding planner to find a venue that was capable to hold the event. And it wasn't. It wasn't. That's your job. Your job is to find an appropriate place so that the police don't raid a wedding a half hour before it's over. That's not the way a wedding is supposed to end. So what I want you to tell me is you're suing her for $4,300. How much of that $4,300 is your fee? $2,000. And you didn't pay him? No. So that's 23, 24 minus 500. You didn't pay him because you have to pay him. I pay him. Part well, of it was paid. to pay him. I'm deducting it. Okay. I'm not paying you for your fee. Okay. You booked the wrong space for your fee. So far, I have 1825. Other than the DJ, who else didn't you pay? I'm very clear. Can I? Other than the DJ, he's going to tell me, the DJ is going to tell me, 
other than the DJ, who else didn't you pay? Mr. Cox, could you stand up, please? <laughs> you seem to want to tell me something, and since you didn't know either one of these parties, I'm going to let you tell me. Do you know any other vendor other than you who wasn't paid? The bartender also was not paid. Bartender. That's correct. Which is his wife. That's correct. I don't care if it was his wife or not. It was the bartender. Right, but what I'm, I'm saying the was the bar was included. How much were you supposed to pay the bartender? The bar and the bartender came with him. He offered to do the bar mm. and to DJ because his pipe busted. Mm. So what I'm saying mm. is, he said, I'll bring my bar and I'll do a cash bar, mm. meaning oh, that... that's because a bar you can't have for $500. So right, we'll do a cash bar. A cash... Mm. Correct. Did you do a cash bar? Is yes, that... ma'am, I did. Okay. So you made some money off the cash bar. Yes, ma'am. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Got it. Now you can sit. So what you paid him was five hundred dollars for both, and one fifty for the bar. Six fifty total. That's what he charged them outside of the wedding. This is a very easy case for me. You were paid almost twenty thousand dollars. I wasn't paid anything. I was yes. paid two thousand dollars. And I would feel doubly furious if, on the day of my wedding, as a new bride of an hour, the event planner said to me. You can't go in unless you sign this contract modifying our first contract. The contract was I, not I, to modify. Your case is dismissed. Contract. We're done. Okay. This court is adjourned. So is your counterclaim. There are some things that I realized that, you know, I could have done better. Basically, 10 days before the wedding, add additional $4,000 on top of $20,000. That never happened. It was just her way of just trying to come up on more money, in my opinion. At the end of the day, she had got her wedding. I'm actually sometimes surprised at professionals like this woman, who is an event planner, has a reputation. She was almost fully compensated for this event. And the wedding was, if it were my wedding, I would say, you know, it's ruined by having a police shut it down. We had a wedding a month ago. Mm -hmm. What would you think of the police? You would not be happy if you paid any amount of money to a professional and had that happen. I really thought it was outrageous. The whole thing was just tacky, waiting outside the venue when she got there from the ceremony, and before she could go in, yeah. she had to sign the contract. That's really not what you do as a professional.